as a patriot police has alluded with Tika Malami, a Ulinda no Ongomo. I'm the current chairperson of the Youth Front Bezapu in the RSA province. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to go to the more. I think in the, in the question that has been posed, as especially me personally, uh, as I said, I'm not going to speak for, for the party because there's someone who's going to come and speak for Izab. Uh, now, there's one thing that is worrying me about the current youth in, in South Africa. We are so politically attached, we do not know where we stand politically. We just move around uh, following the FA, following the NC and whatnot. But when it comes to the politics of Zimbabwe, I've tried to engage uh, with my age mates and all of them. Via uh, Sabi politics, they don't want to associate themselves with whatever political formation. Uh, some are saying we're going to vote for Chamisa, but the moment things about Chamisa start going left, uh, they move away and say, aye, the politics is going to be the So the question that I always ask, I always ask my brother, I'm always Uti, how do we make the politics of Zimbabwe appealing to young ones like me? Because if you look at an organization like ZAP when it started, uh, it was young gentlemen who started the organization. Uh, now we are calling them our heroes. If you look at, uh, even in South Africa, the EFF, uh, it's young people because the politics is appealing. So I don't know if the situation back at home is it too hostile or there's nothing that we're going to benefit from it or what needs to happen for the policy. I think you're going to answer that question for me at a later stage. Uh, if needs be, I always say that we don't need to which is party is bomb or carry guns to go and fight back at home. But if we say we take 100 youths that are willing, like me, to go back home, uh, we stage a protest, but then it becomes a continuous thing. And I think that fire in the youth is going to burn up and maybe a change is going to happen. Because we have seen that uh, on the ballot, we are weak, we are not going to win. And they use Amasocha to intimidate us, to kill us. Uh, as we know that a lot of people have been killed because of politics. But I'm not saying that we must go home and be martyrs and say that I suffer as families. But uh, the question that I always ask myself is, doing nothing. A lot of us, we have got qualifications. But due to lack of documentation, you can't even get to seven, you can't do anything. Your seven day restaurant does so many, become a security guard until when. So I think what needs to be done is if we can have maybe a new formation, because some uh, other formations are too conflicted. But I zap in in it was a new hey, what 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 so there are a lot of things. So I don't know what needs to be done to make the politics of Zimbabwe appealing to the youth. I think uh, other leaders who are here uh, representing other political parties might have something to say. Uh, I, mean, I love Zapu because of its historical background and there's a document that I read before I joined Zapu, uh, which was the political program of Zapu in 1979. Uh, I think they wrote it when they were still in Lusaka. Uh, that document, the way it was detailed, I fell in love with that particular organization and hoping that uh, joining this Izapu Leran that, is, that broke away from Mizanu is going to revive back the old politics. That's how I fell in love with Izapu and that's the hope that I still have. Uh, I'm not saying that the new political parties, uh, they don't have nothing to offer, but we can see that with the Triple C, a lot of young people ran to the Triple C, but now there is nothing going on there. They're just confused. So I don't want to waste my time in an organization. Barantai. I don't want to waste in my, my time in an organization uh, that did not have deep roots. Because at the end of the day, when I wake up, I will be 50 years old. My son is going to be 25. Who's on trying to make change. When I was born, 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 I that's not the life that I envision. So I'm in politics so that not for the betterment of my life, but so that one day my son 
can say I, uh, my father tried to make a change and this is where he left off. And then maybe he's gonna pick it up from where I'm gonna leave off and uh, continue uh, with the pattern. Yeah, boy. Well, thanks, Lindani uh, Komo. He's already raised one of the questions that I think, I mean, some of the questions that I think or I hope are going to be answered. But just as you also mentioned me, I would say um, you spoke about two things. The first one being your joint is up because it already has a history. Uh, and that's why you don't join any other part. And I believe a tree that grows or that chooses to grow underneath a big tree is usually uh, robbed of sunlight and it doesn't become tree enough. Uh, and the, I think this is what we are seeing with especially uh, Izapo. The party has already got a long history, a rich history. The <coughs> former president or the most well-known president of the party already uh, is worshipped all over Zimbabwe. And now, if you try to walk that same path, you are not going to be recognized. I believe that people... I, I respect Chamisa for starting his own party. Because even if he dies tomorrow, you'll get... Uh, he's already etched his name in the annals of history. He formed a political movement after everything was taken away from them. It stood and he still won something. I think he's in the same uh, league right now in terms of achieving or forming a party and achieving something with the likes of Joshua Nkomo, with the likes of uh, Abomok and Swangirai. It's because he chose to walk his new path. Oh, Monzora, who was hand gifted that party, has destroyed it. And he's one of the Mzorewas uh, of our history now because you know, he destroyed something that he was given uh, so that's the first point that I'm going to raise. And then you raise the point uh, of Ama Youth. I will speak as someone who has been a, a, a youth before because I know you've never been my age. So I would say uh, it still goes back. Ah, lucky enough. You can come in. So I would still go back to say uh, Avant who went to the Liberation War went there not because they wanted Usmith out but because they wanted a certain system rooted out. That's why they would say, I would quote uh, Joshua Nkomo, I'm a Nkomoist by the way, so you have to forgive me if you don't approve uh, of some of these things that he did or said. Nkomo said in a radio interview during the liberation struggle, in Pichisagakulu, he said, the idea is not to bring down, down the white man, but to raise the black man to the same level with the white man. So he wasn't talking about eradicating the whites, as Omkabe and Zanupiev later did. He was talking about a multiracial society in which people lived together as equals. So they had, they knew what they were fighting. They were fighting a system that was uh, raising a race above another without, without fighting a particular race. Because in that same system, you'd find that there were people who were blacks and benefiting either directly or as surrogates. Then in the liberation movements, there were people like our Joseph Luke Calverwell who were fighting against uh, the same system which was meant to benefit a race in which they belonged. Uh, who taught, I mean, I think about name, Usse Caffield taught, you know that he didn't last as a prime minister because he made certain concessions which would have stopped Zimbabwe going to war if they had been followed through. So they were fighting a system. Then the peasant who fed the liberation struggle, uh, stalwarts or fighters, they knew what these guys were fighting for. But if you go out there and ask Umfano Mnano Wuti, right, Uspang Lizuluela, Akawas, Laounje, so you are there because of the history of Zabu, not what Zabu promises you. So you are not there for the future. You are there to try and be a parasite on what somebody else built. Other than that, I don't think good when you know ideologically what Sapo stands for. Umpondozo kuluma waitilinga nchai. So that's why uh, nobody told you to come to South Africa. 
It's a struggle. Coming to South Africa is an economic struggle that you were waging. Nobody told you to go. But because you saw a benefit out of going to South Africa, you came. So if a youth member benefits, sees some benefits uh, from joining a certain political party, not only joining a party, from participating in politics, they will join. They won't need to be pushed in. So to the political parties we have now, represent a promise for the youth. I hope they're going to answer. Comrade from the e-movement, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, esteemed leaders of different political parties and uh, Zimbabweans. Thank you for this great opportunity that you've given me. I never thought that I'll be standing in front of you this, this afternoon, as I thought that I'll just be accompanying um, my fellow mate, uh, Trust. My name is Anad Arnold Sululu. Uh, I'm a former member of parliament from Slovela constituency. That was in 2009 to 2013. I was actually one of the first members with my Ben I here to form the MDC here in South Africa some years, years back. Um, and currently, I am leading a new movement to be changed political party called E Movement. Um, why E Movement? We felt that there's a gap in the, in the Zimbabwe political uh, space for the youth. I like what my young man was told, talking about that there are no political parties that are engaging the youth and giving them employment or jobs. But if you look at the is the very least shown. Why Takanya form an e-movement is because Takawana the triple C that was formed was more like MDC. So we felt that it had failed to deliver some of its promises. Like for me, when I joined the party, I was a former banker and I had to join the party thinking that we can take Zanu PF out of power, but we failed. So we thought that now this triple C, we feel that we need more parties in Zimbabwean politics, especially in parliament, because all of us are dwelling on two political parties which have failed the nation. Zanu PF mainly has failed us. And when I say the other political parties has failed the nation, we can see what is happening right now. Though they haven't been into government and governed, but in terms of taking the people forward. Amata Bandeng voted for the opposition, especially MDC and Triple C. And I'm not shy to say that we have failed the people because we didn't deliver that, what we have promised them. Zimbabwe is still being led by ZANU PF, which is something that is, you know, hurting me. And currently, with all these past elections, uh, we are still, we are still behind. We are not moving forward, and Zimbabweans are suffering. All Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora, not only here in South Africa, in many countries all over the world, they really want to see a change in our country. They've supported us financially. They've supported us uh, emotionally, morally. They've given us that support that we think by now, as Zimbabweans, we should move on, but we still. It is standstill. This past elections, we had intended to put some uh, few councillors or MPs to participate in the general elections. But when we sat down, we are only a few of us. We are still building up structures as e movement. Uh, we felt that Zek is the stumbling block. We won't go anywhere with Zek. Why Zek? It's because it's partial. I think all of us knows that to most of us, Zek is an UPF. When it does run the elections, it does favor an UPF. It's a sad scenario, and we feel that it's high time now as Zimbabweans and all polit political parties involved to engage Zek to make an independent body that is going to deliver, you know, a transparent, credible, free and fair elections especially when we come to 2018. 2023 has been a mess, and we are stuck now in the mud as Zimbabweans. This is not what we anticipated. This is not what we anticipated. As a movement, we support all progressive parties. We are coming in between the two major parties and saying, 
those who feel that ZANU PF are not doing it or Triple C are not doing it, we are coming up, especially with the youth. We want to engage the youth. We want to have more youth coming up. You know, they are the future leaders. I know some of them are the present leaders as well. But we want to engage the youth and educate them, giving them the experience that we had and where we have failed, especially for me. I know in my constituents in Slovenia, there are certain things that we didn't do well. And there's a party. But now we feel that it's high time that we should bring in new ideas, new ideologies, as uh, Collis was trying to say here. We need a new party that is going to take Zimbabwe to greater heights. Yes, Zanu Kiev is a well-established party, which has been there for years. But its leadership is pathetic. We are crying now, especially with the recent, uh, you know, appointments that were done by E.D. Mlangago. Us as a movement, we have written to Zek and told them that these elections are null and void, just like the reports that came from the SADAC, the EU, and other, you know, observers and international observers. The elections were null and void. Though it's very difficult now to just say, let's go for rerun. We are looking at the situation where Zimbabwe is, but we are looking forward that as a movement, if we can engage all stakeholders, political parties, the church, the youth, the business people, and then we sit down and pave the way for a greater Zimbabwe. But Zanu PF is there, a big stumble block, they won't allow to that. Already they're in government, they're running, they're appointing ministers, they're appointing everyone. And we are stuck as a nation. What's the way forward? That is the greatest call that we, we are asking. But my plea or our plea as e-movement is that it has come to the point that us as Zimbabweans, especially the citizens, it's upon us to solve the problems in Zimbabwe. We cannot expect Sadak and people from outside to come and solve our problems. If we are to demonstrate, let us go out there and demonstrate. But I feel that the most important thing now is to sit down, and I don't know how we're going to do it as, as different political parties and you do put different ideologies and who's going to steer it. Unfortunately, the church, which we believe that could be the one who, who are the past setters in, in coming up with the um, uh, stakeholders meeting, are sitting down. But we really need to have a national dialogue. I remember even with the late Morgan Changrai, who was my boss, he emphasized that there's no way where we're going to go and improve the situation in this country. If we run the elections this way, like what happened to Triple C now, they've got the support. And surely all of us know that Triple C won the election. We know that. But look what happened. Zek announced the wrong winners. And that is Zanu PF. And look what's happening now. And we are letting it lie. Most of us, we are on the social media. We are very good as Zimbabweans on the social media. I'm sad to say that. But when it comes to take action now, yo, I don't know how educated we are. Some are now actually asking, are we really educated? Or are we deemed to be educated? Why is it that we cannot solve our own problems as a country? And that's where e-movement is coming in and say, guys, let's come in there. Bread and butter issues. Look at our roads. Look at the water situation in all cities. A few days ago, I was in Harare. This water situation day, the water situation there is appalling. Four days, five days without water. And we go and pay the water rates. Electricity, you know the situation. We cannot talk about the salaries and many other problems that we are facing as a country. <clears throat> But surely we are educated. And we're still, Zimbabwe has got resources, natural resources. Where I come from, Slovela Day, we've got so much gold. I understand there's diamond too. And all of that has been taken by a few elites. And the rest are poor. Can we call ourselves leaders? What is our problem? I would like to thank the organizers of such a uh, uh, events where we can come and share as political parties because we strongly believe that it's time that we sit together as political parties and pave the way for our country.
instead of fighting to take over the road and lead our country. I like the situation here in South Africa, the system they use. Most small, small political parties, their leaders are in parliament. And that's in Zimbabwe, only looking at two political parties. We are not like America or Britain. Those are advanced countries. We believe that we must have a, 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 a political settlement that is, you know, conducive to our own environment. It's an African country. And it's e movement. We believe so much in Ubuntu. And like what our leading parties and PF say, it's passy passy. What is passy passy for this age? For what? We did that past name and when we were fighting the, 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 the war, the, the liberation war. But now, how can you say pass with your own brother and you expect to, to uplift that person? What is that? We've got toxic in, uh, I mean, politics in Zimbabwe. It's high time now. We should restrain from that and start thinking wise, guys. Zimbabwe has got a potential to be one of the greatest countries in this world. If we are united and it's a movement we want to unify all these political parties. Let's come together, that's our plea, and pave a way for a greater Zimbabwe. I thank you for this opportunity that you gave me. Thank you. Um, I just said, uh, Smolani had a question. Yeah, but yeah. That, yeah you, you will. Welcome. But just to say, there will be a question and answer segment. No, you can wait. Maybe you forget. It's very old. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, there will be a question and answer segment. I wanted to say this before you even asked. So, to our speakers, don't divert from, don't be, don't feel obliged to divert from the speech that you prepared or the presentation that you prepared, trying to answer some of these jabs that are directed at you. There will be a question and answer segment where questions will be directed at everyone who has been up here speaking, and you will be given a chance to respond. But you can ask. Thank okay, you. I, I just wanted You're to know okay. about the uh, e-movement. Is uh, it uh, electronic movement or what? Just yeah, that's a very good question. It's, it's not yet well known because uh, we started as, a, as a, just a movement, a few youths, and uh, I'm actually leading it. But uh, it's our, we actually registered it in Zimbabwe. It's a registered party in Zimbabwe, but we haven't advertised, we haven't gone out to, to the public, and it's something that we want to start doing now. You are going to know about it in the near future. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Comrade Silulu. Uh, you see the <coughs> the problems of staying for so long without seeing each other. Mm -hmm. I now realize that I know this comrade very well. When he introduced himself, then mm -hmm. I remembered that yes. he once got us drunk somewhere at Pactonian. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's going to repeat it again today. <laughs> anyway, uh, as I've said, when you come here to present, don't feel obliged to respond to people. And my plea also to those who are listening is just note down the questions as, as people are presenting. Then you'll be given a question and answer segment. And also a disclaimer to especially trust. Uh, you will hear that people are raising a lot uh, of jabs, or let me say negatives around triple C. That's not because they have forgotten that the problems in Zimbabwe, the main problems in Zimbabwe, uh, are being directed and authored by Zanu PF, but it's because when you go to church, you'd rather rebu rebuke uh, a fellow congregant than spend time insulting the devil because the devil is already beyond redemption. And I had to say this before Zanu PF members arrive here. So, we'll, because we gave you hope, guys, we still give you the hope. And you are representing us there because it's, low, it's a long way up to 2028 when we hope that some of the things that we raise here as constructive criticism, you are going to forward them to your party so that they change some of the ways they do their things. Maybe they will start singing something else instead of singing Nero, Nero, Famba, Nepora in parliament. Uh, now, our next speaker, as I've already introduced, is Misty. I don't know if he's a comrade, he's a champion or change champion, trust love. <laughs> I knew him as the interim chair of South Africa province for TP He will introduce himself because Chabang has changed things. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is Trust um, Ketani Ntiane and um, <clears throat> I represent this organization, uh, uh, this political party called the uh, Triple C. And uh, let me just start by saying, you know, when uh, a country changed its name from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe, uh, the same people who were in Rhodesia did not change. They were the same people. The uh, whites remained whites, blacks remained wh blacks, and uh, shown us remained shown us, and they really remained shown us. So when we formed Triple uh, C, obviously uh, the people who were the majority in the MDC, uh, or the people who were providing a dissenting voice against the status quo against NPF, uh, the people who had come in, uh, together in 1999 and they provided an alternative voice. The same people, most of this, those people, they followed the Triple C. So I just want to demystify the, the fact that uh, uh, people are saying, no, this is just the MDC, which is the ZANPF narrative to say this is just the MDC, which, which became Triple C. Triple C is a new party, but even though it is a new party, the people uh, who are there. Uh, mostly its leaders were the people who were in the MDC. So uh, that to, just to clarify so that people do not confuse us with the, the MDC. But again, before I even come to my, uh, to present my thoughts and show, share my thoughts on today's topic, uh, I, I had uh, uh, Mr. Mnubi is saying that the, the only part with the, an ideology is our esteemed uh, Zap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. It has ZCP. It's what? ZCP. ZCP. Oh, okay. Yes. <coughs> sorry. Sorry for correcting. ZCP. I I will tend to differ with you there. I think the last time I checked, uh, the definition of an ideology is a system of ideas and ideals, mm. and uh, especially uh, those of economic and the political theory. And when we look into our own age, we we'll see the ideas, the ideals of political theories there. We are a party that uh, actually uh, focus or that drive uh, the social change in our community, in our society, in our country. We are a, a, a party that want to bring change in, uh, in the lives of our people in the country. And of course, we're talking of democratic change, we're talking of the, the democratic uh, principles, and uh, I'm not going to dwell that so much, but just to indicate that uh, we are not an ideological-less party. <clears throat> well, there is uh, uh, perhaps before I go to my main speech, uh, let me just say thank you, uh, diaspora uh, leadership, uh, comrade Ma. Ben, I heard you. Oh, you, 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 you wear different hats. I want to thank you for. Uh, being the director of the organization that has brought us together. And it's very important that we share uh, ideas, we engage and uh, uh, challenge each other so that we have a way forward. Because most of the time people, they talk uh, uh, isolated, uh, each one in his or, in, or corner, and uh, people think we are right. Uh, as Triple C, we are not scared of debate. We are not scared of criticism. Uh, that helps us to to grow. That helps us to understand uh, the dynamics in our political setups. Uh, uh, to understand uh, the issues that really betrays our people. So 
do not be scared to criticize and I feel happy when I get criticized because we thrive on those uh, criticism and it helps us to be uh, well informed. So thank you very much once more. To begin with, uh, I want to say um, the history of the, our country was, uh, of, of our struggle for democracy was uh, comprehensively given by Nguwe uh, and Mabena. It's true that we come from a very contested uh, elections from 1980 to 1990, uh, uh, but it became so critical in 1999, when the people from all walks of life, like the labor, the faith-based, and uh, the academics, uh, and the other formations in the country decided to come together. And of course, uh, from, let me not burden you so much about the, the history, because we all understand, we all know that, we have all reached that. But, uh, uh, it forms the basis of some of our arguments that we are going to uh, present to you today. To say, we came, uh, the formations uh, of political movements, that of political parties, which is the MDC, and the, which became MDCT, and, and the MDCN, and the MDC 99, and the, of course, our old uh, esteemed the Zapu, which was Zapu in the Zanu, and uh, which became Z Zapu under our late comrade uh, Tawengwa, and the other, and, and the Stole uh, party, and others. They were formations of these formations of these political parties mostly was to respond to the system that was established by Zanu PF when they came into power. This system uh, is very vicious, uh, it's a brutal system, it's, it's a system, it's a well-organized system that is meant to return ZANPF into power as we speak up to today. This is the system that um, we as Zimbabweans in those political uh, formations we wanted to challenge and to change and to also uh, argue that uh, that system is the one that brought down our economy, that brought down our standard of living, that created the crisis and poverty of our people. So we want our people to uh, to have a, to respond to that system and change the system completely. Let me fast forward our discussions to. Uh, the formation of uh, Triple C. Triple C, it was formed after realizing that uh, as leadership, we were in this, most of the people who were, who were in the MDC, we had all MDC alliance in particular. We were dread to courts by the system, our properties were taken and uh, everything that we thought uh, was owed by us was taken through the proxy uh, friends of the system uh, which was then led by our uh, current uh, Mr. Monzora. We did not only lose the property, we lose our access to, to, to finances. We also, uh, our MPs were recalled. So the issue of recalling the, the MPs did not start today. It started yesterday. After losing all that, they, own, they, they realized that, that was as if it, it was not enough. They also took the name. They also took. So we were left nameless. So we're driven in a corner and said, we as Zimbabweans, we drive the agenda of most Zimbabweans. We drive the interest of the majority in Zimbabwe. Let us form 
every uh, a, 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 a political party. You would remember that you would remember that the first even when we, we assembled together and say let's form a political party, we came with the name. Before we went to register, that name Zanpev system had already been to, to register that name. Uh, it was citizens' convergence. <laughs> We tried again to have another name. They also, they were, it looked how, that, that showed you how serious the ZANPF system identified us as a threat to their citadel power. So we realized, we then started with a strategy, uh, which uh, some of you might not be, uh, <clears throat> agree with me but is allowed to disagree we called it uh, strategic ambiguity strategic ambiguity uh, we it's a, a system where we do not reveal everything we do not uh, tell you exactly uh, how we move forward but our people or our constituencies, they know, and they know very well who we are and how we are doing things. And we are glad that we managed to traverse the breadth and width of, uh, and length of our country. And we managed to inform the people uh, on how we operate as Triple C. This brings me to the issue of why uh, are you saying you are structureless? At the same time, you say you got structures. That ambiguity kicks in. We know very well that we have structures. But given the experience that the system is hunting us left and right, they would use the same constitution you have to take us into their captured courts and uh, destroy us. They will use the same structures that you have to make sure that they can destroy us. We are in, we have developed certain systems. We are a, a we have a national assembly, which means that we also have a provincial assembly, district assemblies. Now we have assemblies. I think some of you have listened to our president last yesterday. You heard that we have, sit, we have been sitting to an, uh, for the 18th time as a National Assembly to make decisions. So we know very well who we are. We know our, structure, our structures. We know uh, how we function. We give each other our roles and tasks on how we function. Uh, some of you might have heard about task force. Some of you might have heard um, uh, That's where or how we give ourselves roles to play. Now, let me fast forward to the elections. We had to have the election. We realized that ZANPF wanted to have a part, a one part state for all along. You remember that uh, uh, it was uh, Robert Mugabe's uh, wish, his uh, belief that they was, uh, he was wanted to establish a one-party state. Upon criticism, he then established, you know, uh, proxy uh, opposition. Of course, the real opposition was ZAP. That was the real option, but you know how we destroyed ZAP and formed a unit accord, uh, pressuring uh, the ZAPU into into unit accord, into submission after the the, the Gukra Hunde and all the massacres that we all know. <clears throat> so we said no, but we cannot uh, boycott the election and stand as there because there are no enough reforms. We we are going to. Uh, to, to face the bull by its horns. 
We do not want to give up the political space in Zimbabwe to the enemy or the system. We said, let's, fi let's face it. Let's fight. We know the system, we knew that the system will not uh, announce the proper results even if we won by 99%. We knew that. But we also wanted to indicate to the world and to show to the world that uh, there are Zimbabweans who are prepared to differ with this current system, with the, diff the current government, with, to differ uh, with ZANPF. We, that's how, that's why we had to engage with uh, the SADI community, the AU, uh, the international community, to say we need, we, 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 we actually asked the, uh, the same system to, to invite the, the observers. When the observers, I thought uh, there would be time for questions. Time. time. I know I was Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it's a question. Sorry about that. Now, the system didn't know that the observers who had also done our SGPC, we had also done our international relations properly, we had uh, 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 articulated our message in the region, uh, in AU and international community. And we wanted the people of the international community to come and see how wicked and uh, how manipulative uh, the the system of ZANPF is. And uh, we did that. You would remember pre-elections as according to the SADIC report. Not only according to the SADIC report, but as according to, our, to the, what we witnessed. There was no freedom of uh, assembly. We had to force it. People were not allowed, we were not allowed to campaign freely. Our people, our agents were brutalized, they were beaten. Uh, you know, some of the rallies, more than 80 rallies were dissipated by ZANU PF. And, uh, we, 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 but we stood our ground until the elections took place. And when the election took place, of course, you know what happened on the election, uh, during the election. And our, our, our most important uh, constituencies, which are, uh, of course, where we dominate, there was voter suppression. There were no ballot papers on the place. Mostly Bulawai, Manikaland, and Arare, where we know we dominate even Masungo, where we know we dominate in terms of support, the ballot papers were suppressed. They were not even given in other places. The ballot papers were not even suppressed. They only uh, got to, to the polling station the next day. To such an extent that we got <clears throat> nearly a million people who could not vote. And that is a big chunk. And ZANPF know that most of those people were going to vote for the opposition. I say nearly, nearly uh, between 700 to a, to a million people. And uh, we also witnessed uh, the issue of the voters' role. The voters' role was only given in the last minute. And even the one that we got was not analyzable, was not researchable. That voters' role uh, was... Uh, full of uh, a lot of irregularities. It was a voter roll roll which still have ghost voters, a voter's roll which still, uh, if checked, uh, got, uh, uh, yeah, ghost voters. So it was one of the areas that uh, ZANPF used to, to, to rig us. I know that I'm repeating some of the things that you know very well, but it's important that we share, we remind each other that of the terrain that we walked, we passed through. We have an issue, of course, of uh, uh, the, 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 the patriotic bill, which was uh, uh, in, uh, provided injustice in our system, in, in our government, in, in our society. 
where people were not allowed now to speak, to, uh, to express themselves freely. Uh, so many uh, violations of uh, our constitutional rights there. And lastly, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the elections, was that, or even though on the day of elections it was regarded as peaceful and, 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 and calm, but the manipulation was so huge to the extent that uh, there was this organization called the FAS, Forever Association of Zimbabwe. This was like a, a quasi a military uh, organization that is attached to ZANU, to ZANU that supported ZANU. FAS made sure that people were to be uh, you know, whipped into line to vote for, for them. And it happened glaringly, uh, as reported by, by, by Sadi. You know, uh, I'm so much uh, worried and concerned that while we have all these reports, our people are being diverted or distracted from focusing on the main issues that it fails or the main challenges that faces Zimbabwe. The challenge that we should do as a, as a society, work together, fight together, and challenge the current uh, system of ZANPF. People tend to look to the victim. You know, from the advent of democracy, or democratic process in Zimbabwe. Always the perpetrator was ZANPF and its system. The victim was always uh, the primary focus of, 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 uh, of blame. People blamed our father, Uba Abu but he was the victim. Came Edgar Tegere. The people blamed, blamed Taker. Came also, uh, you know, I think there was Stolle also. The people blamed uh, Stolle. Came MDC. The people blamed MDC and Swangrai. Now that we have another, uh, the Triple C that have created havoc, that have created challenges, serious uh, problems for ZANPF. People are diverted and they are made to buy into the narrative of blaming the opposition. We are not saying that we are perfect as a party, but we understand that in the struggle, in the fight against this system, there are likely to be uh, weaknesses. And then the fact, the, pro, the challenge is that people are made to focus on the challenges, uh, all the weaknesses of the fight. You know, this one uh, guy who uh, is a saying that the problem of an African is that when you are fighting for justice with another hand, you will be fighting uh, your own people trying to fight to, to resist blows from your own people with another hand. The very people you are trying to fight for their justice, the, for their freedom, you will be trying to say, oh, my, my brothers and sisters, my comrades, let's, uh, I'm fighting the enemy here. But you end up fighting with one hand because the other hand is trying to you know, to fight, I mean, to restrain your own comrades. This is what I, this is what we are witnessing. But then, okay, first, uh, <coughs> tracking again to uh, the SADC uh, report was very clear that elections were in, uh, flawed, uh, the process was flawed, uh, the outcome is that there were irregularities, and the outcome of the election, the election uh, did not meet the standards uh, of elections, and that we used uh, the, uh, the as the SADC uh, report reflected, they used our own constitution, our own electoral laws, 
their own guidelines as, uh, as revised in 2021. Despite all that, ZANPF want us to believe otherwise. In fact, they disingenuously attacked the message. They disingenuously attacked uh, Dr. Nevasim Mum and labeled him as the Western puppet. And it's only not him. My, you know, my, my own uh, concern with that, if you look at it, they targeted only Sadiq report, but we did. We had also the Qatar report. We had the AU report. I did not hear them attacking uh, Good Luck Jonathan, the former Nigerian president, who gave a very clear report that Zimbabwe's elections also were flawed were short of the minimal standard. So it is, it shows that ZANPF actually, uh, they always create narratives uh, to dispatch or to destroy any voice that seems to be uh, representing the interests of the majority in a country. So, in that context, it is very clear that the international community, of course, inter uh, including European Union and others, are against what happened in Zimbabwe, are saying elections were flawed. It was on that basis that the C calls for new, fresh elections which of course people will easily dismiss that as a, a daydream, a, pipe, a pipeline dream. But we are not only saying that. We are saying that as a party, if, even if fresh elections may not happen, at least let us have a transitional authority, a transitional government. I know that ZANU-PF, uh, they, they, they want GNU, but uh, they are afraid, they are ashamed to talk about it. Uh, because obviously they, they know very well that they will not be able to run that, 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 that country without the opposition. They will not be able to run that country successful for the next five years. They are away. But they will, they've dismissed everything to say, no, we don't want anything. Elections were won free and fair. Elections were okay, we are not going back there, we will run this country. But we know what is happening in our country right now. I just heard that uh, there is a new currency that has been formed, that has been introduced by Mnangagwa's, uh, announced by Mnangagwa's son, who is now the Deputy Minister of Finance. And uh, But it won't help anything. Like our own uh, Honorable Tendai Biti always say, these, are, these guys as Gananda of, of, of corruption. These are actually uh, bishops of corruption, uh, bishops of looting. They, are, they have not yet repented. They are still doing the same. They are all still going to do the same. Now, as Triple C, we also expect that uh, very soon Sadiq is going to hold a summit. On, uh, we expect that Zimbabwe will be on the agenda. And the outcome of that summit, we expect that they will pronounce something regarding their election, their, their election report, the SAD uh, report. Uh, in particular, uh, of course, it was uh, the SAD uh, Troika leaders who, who <coughs> are going to make those presentations. We were also aware that ZANPF also had responded. Uh, to to, to, to Sadiq report. They have also denied, they also uh, uh, making the representation very well. But we are saying that after the, the, that the report, we are going to map a way forward properly. We are going to be informed by that report. 
that is going to come or the resolutions of SADC. But as a party also, we have our own uh, resolutions. We are pushing uh, the interests of our people. We are saying against all odds. Uh, we have the issue of, uh, sorry, let me talk also, comment on the issue of um, our members in parliament, why we had to come to, to join the, this very government. Uh, that we are, are fighting against. We are saying these elections are not, uh, we're not, we're sham elections, we don't recognize this government. And that is very true. But given the political landscape in Zimbabwe and in the region, if you are going to say uh, we are going to rely on SADC alone, you are going to have the challenges. Because they will see that they, they, because what, what if tomorrow Sadi comes up and say no, you guys, you can, you still have to have to engage on your own and uh, maybe do reforms for 2028. You see, as a party, we have to guard what we call the zones of autonomy. Even the elections were rigged. Even in a stolen election, even in those sham processes, but they were able to not to, they, fi they failed to rig everything. They rigged, but they failed to rig everything. So the little that they failed to rig is what we keep. We know that they've read the little that they could not steal is what we keep. They have stolen, yes, but you know when you find your know, house, criminals have uh, 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 vandalized your house and they've stolen uh, furniture and they left a bed and they left something in the kitchen, you cannot throw away everything and say because uh, these are criminals. And when you keep your bed, you keep your food stuff, you keep whatever is left, it's not a justification that, uh, that the criminals were good. It's not a recognition of that criminal. It's not a recognition of those, uh, of those thieves. So this is what has happened. We are saying no. Despite what you have done, we don't recognize you guys, we don't recognize this government. This government is, 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 is came out of legitimacy, and anything that came out of a flawed process is illegitimate. But we are saying, we, we, because you left other places, you know, you could not steal other, uh, 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 other areas. We keep those. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not proud of what has happened in Zimbabwe. We are not proud and we are not uh, celebrating uh, going into, go into government, I mean, uh, going into parliament. We know very well that the process was compromised, that that parliament is compromised. But we are saying, with the little that is there, let us save our people. Let us save the interests of our people. But not only focusing on that, I guess you all know that our, our president is not, will not be in parliament. And he is, uh, I guess you all know that he, will, he, he would also wish to be in government, but not in this kind of government. We are fighting for uh, reforms, we are fighting for justice, we are fighting for freedom, we are fighting for, uh, to change the system. We are fighting for our people to get better life in Zimbabwe. Uh, I know I'm given enough time to, to speak as I like, but I think I've spoken enough uh, for now. Uh, some of the issues that you have raised, I've noted them down. <coughs> I will only respond to them when, uh, when Q&A time uh, is given. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Comrade Trust Lovo. I think this is a first, and I will tell you why. Uh, 
despite, uh, in fact, let me say, on top of the good presentation that you gave, which I would say is a very plausible argument that you are presenting, this is the first time I've ever listened to a triple C person making such a long presentation without mentioning the S and Jamis. I think it is a, a cap of hands. It's the first time. He never mentioned him by name even once. Yeah, so uh, I will hope that when you come back, you will also respond to this. You gave an analogy of thieves breaking into your house, stealing a lot, and then you deciding to keep what remained. But I would say the correct analog would be you are playing a match, a soccer match, you lose 3-2, you say the referee is biased, the other team, you don't recognize the three goals that were scored by the other team, but you want to keep the two goals that you, you scored and you say you still want the replay, but you want to start from two goals. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're going to keep that and then you're going to respond to it. I said Comrade Mapena will be the last to speak, so that means we're moving on to Comrade Tingilis Wembondo. You will introduce himself correctly and state what portfolio of SAPU is going to represent here. Baba Mbond, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Comrade Mapena, and of Ujanda. Mm. Hey, yeah, we, as Nubel uh, said, uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah. I think we met when Methodist was still housing our our people there. Okay. Those, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there might be some comrades here I have not uh, realized. Please, Abushu uh, Guti, Nibangani. Sanbonandani. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, it is the gatherings like this one that keep people talking. We need to talk and sing a pale amanda kulum. We need to talk. And when we talk, somebody is going to listen. We need to talk. And I thank you very much for this kind of a setup. Um, you know, there has been a, okay, he has just said that I must introduce myself. Nguting um, Elizabeth Bondo, Nguzapu, I'm the former chairperson of Zapu in this province, South Africa, and uh, currently I'm a member of the NPC. Uh, I wanted to be very clear which I've been uh, requested to come here and, pre and represent the leadership in this province of, of South Africa. And um, I'm glad, I'm excited, I'm learning a lot from the comrades and hopefully also I'm going to learn a lot from the questions that are going to be imposed um, you see, our history as a country has taught us or has given the young people that you can survive through lies. You can survive through killings. You can survive through suppression and oppression. Young people, when they are growing in that kind of a setup, the mind is for me to get this or that. I must behave this way. I'm glad that somebody spoke about the power that is not being given to young people. You see, there is no power that is going to be given to young people because the system has designed that particular system for the young people to be despondent, to be to be to be uncertain about the future, uh, to be hopeless, so that in the midst of their hopelessness, the only way to do 
is to find their way to neighboring countries or to diaspora and leave the system the way it is. The system has designed it to an extent which the same young people whom we believe they must stand up and do something. <coughs> Comments, they are not going to do it because the system has made them with Bangaboni the potential that they do have. And then remember, they did not do it to young people. This thing begins when you look into the issue of Ikukuraund, beside what we already know about what happened, one of the major thing, it was not only to exterminate Amandebele and those who were prosable. It was also to create fear to everybody, including those who support Zara or who support that. If you create fear and uh, people will grow with that fear, that's why today when we think of ZANU-PF, we think of death, we think of being punished, we think of all sorts of things because it has been created and it has been designed properly. Somebody here said, this system is well organized. It is well organized. Not organized only, it is also well resourced. Never undermine a well-resourced system. And the, now, as Zapu, we know our ideology is human rightism. And out of human rightism, so many things come in. But there is this one that I want us to understand from the Zapu point of view, is that my presentation here about the 23rd circus is going to be around human rightism because it is the human abuse that we experience in all France as a result of the regime that we do have. Uh, If you look at everything that has collapsed and they keep on collapsing, it is because there is no regard to the rights of our people. Whether the elections are stolen day in, day out, whether there is oppression <clears throat> and oppression, it is because they don't care about our rights. We are here today talking about what happened on the 23rd. We should be here talking about that Zimbabweans have spoken, Zimbabweans have won. So what is the way forward? Towards what? Development. But we are going back and hopefully, comrades, we are not going to come to 2028 and still speak about the what? The same thing which has now become a disease that there is always an aftermath of speaking about what we failed to do. Zapu is a part of uh, three C's, not a... Uh, <laughs> 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 Home class, not a... <laughs> is a, pass, a part of consultation. <clears throat> compromise and consensus and uh, probably uh, the, 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 the weakness of Nkomo was always this this crisis that's why professor much has one day or oh, he kept on saying the reason why we are here is because Umdala always wanted national he wanted this togetherness even on circumstances that did not demand them but understandably so the old man knew what he was doing he was building a nation therefore today let's look upon what transpired having said that Zabo is a part of consultation compromise and consensus every time we approach elections we look forward to the throes of a new zimbabwe 
a country with no political virus that pushes citizens to the diaspora. Uh, we look forward to a country without teen despots who hold power for themselves, their families, and their friends. Despots who loot state resources and violate human rights with impunity. Elections are an expression of the will of the people and form a central feature of any democratic setup. The electorate refuses or always refuses to accept elections outcome when it is clear there has been an infringement of violation of civil rights and the right to choose. What we have noticed so far is much repression, suppression of people, uh, of people's basic rights to choose their representatives or representatives. This systematic erosion of the right of the people to choose has been flouted and abated. That's why we are here. We are talking about things which have been happening in every corner. Even the ZANPF themselves, they will tell you, in this year, MDC1, in this year, MDC1, we keep on. Then you wonder, go nagelepi. Where are we missing the point in order for us to see Fige Ekenan? And then we've noticed and witnessed the flouting of electoral processes and procedures and the ripping apart of our country by the ZEC under the stewardship of the current commissioner. Hence, we call upon a total electorate reform. And this should be followed immediately by a process of rehabilitation of the ZEC. Beside all the things that we do have in mind, comrades, and we are busy with, one of the major toy toy that we should do, and continuously so, is to toy toy over Zek. Mm -hmm. Probably we, we, we are misdirecting our attention because we've got this feeling that Zek is Zano. Zano is Zek. But probably we need to go direct to Zek. As Zapu, we have issued a statement rejecting the circus which unfolded on the 23rd of August 2023. A number of issues were noted by Zapu, such as the cost of participation in the election. Comrades, that money on its own, on its own, was an abuse of power. That people should fork out 20,000 US dollars because when I uyaz uti you are gaining from the looted coffers, that on its own made the ground to be uneven. Also, the demilitation, which was designed to bring about ZANU-PF supporters in the strongholds of the other opposition. We need to do away with that. Including all the general chaotic situation which unfolded, like the voters roll. Those things need to be attended as a matter of agency. If it means all of us, we are to form a united front 
in order to, co to, to correct these imbalances. So be it, comrades. Hence, I began by saying Zapo is for consultation, compromise, and consensus. The ground wasn't even, and we were surprised by the endorsement of this illegitimate exercise by some quarters. Some of them, they're just across the street. Believe you me, if ZANPF is given the urge, the power by the ANC, comrades, there is nothing we can do. Zimbabweans, we are on our own. And then, we are upheld by the role played by some regional actors who have ignored human rights abuses, widespread intimidation, etc. We need to stand firm for democratic values. Comrades, we need to stand firm for democratic values. But the question still stands. I arrived in South Africa 8 January 1988 when I landed in Johannesburg. You can calculate how many years. The same thing I'm talking about that the young people are forced to flee the country. They are so squeezed that they cannot breathe at all. And then they know that when these young people flee the country, then they are home and dry. Nobody will stand up and challenge them. If we were not accepted or accommodated by South Africa and the other neighboring countries, and we are all squeezed in our country, comrades, believe you me, we could be talking and speaking about a different setup. Because the system designed it, which no one is going to stand against us as long as we create a situation whereby all those frustrated, aggrieved, they should only see the solution as finding their way out. And then, we demand a total overhaul of the electoral system and a revisit, as I have said, of the delimitation. We can't live on the dangerous prescription given to us by ZANU-PF, prescribed to our people this way. It, 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 the reason again why we are talking now, let's be honest, it is because of the CCC. Comet uh, Love. We all know what happened. We all know how they are raw. They have been robbed. That's why we are here to talk about it. Obviously, we know that beside what is in the open, which has happened to the CC, we know that on the local government, including in some other areas, people have been intimidated it's either to stay away from voting or to vote for the Green Party. So all this if we see it happening now to the CC, CCC, which has, which has got a quite number of members of parliament, what about those small parties which are somewhere in the corners of the country? It's worse. What I'm saying is that we are in a situation whereby we have to form a united front in order to face this monster. It's not going to be easy, comrades. Make no mistake about it. It's not going to be easy, comrades. Probably talking beside the lines has to come to an end. And then for it to come to an end, we need setups like these ones where we will speak. And then, if we don't challenge this as core, it will mean a continuation of nepotism, tribalism, and marginalization. We haven't even gone to understand the nature of the nepotism, the nature of the tribalism, the nature of the mar 
generation. We have never even spoken about the development which we are supposed to be talking about now. Development. We are still talking about the stolen elections. Not once, not twice, but many since 1980, the elections have been stolen. Yes. I remember very clear that Margaret Thatcher or the UK government in 1980, before the elections, they sent a delegation only to go and they inspect the industries in Zimbabwe. When the delegation went to give a report, they said, the industry in Rhodesia can only be managed by Ungom. Margaret Thatcher came and said, it doesn't mean that if you are voted by the majority, we will hand over the government to you. We want somebody who is going to be able to manage the, what, the industry. He was reporting, he was saying, which even if the, it is perceived by then that the Shona people are the majority and they will easily vote for ZANU, they won't give Ngabe the, 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 what, the, 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 the government, but they'll give him Gomu. Unaware that Lord Soames had been bought by the Americans. That's where the problem began. Unaware of that. He even said, no, 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 no. We, if Ngomo is given that country to run, we shall turn Joshua Ngomo into a Jomo Kenyatta. The Americans said, Margaret Thatcher, you are dreaming. Ngomo has got the zebra. Kenyatta has got no zebra. What are you going to do with the zebra? At the end, all is history. So I'm talking about the stealing of the election. That is a long thing. We are still talking about it now. Instead of talking about development going forward. And then, um, it should be noted that vociferous political posturing um, and the fundamentalist legal opinions that are all over are not going to give us Zimbabwe. We need to, all, in all forms of life, everybody, we need to shake up and say, guys, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? Yes, we understand what we are fighting a brutal system. But at the end of the day, are we going to fold our arms and say, no, by again, Benz, I mean, <clears throat> no, it can't be that, comrades. A time must come when we are to challenge collectively, united. And then, Sadiq has asked all those grieving to follow available processes and channels to voice their concerns, knowing very well that no one will listen. Once you see Satik giving a report, even if they say it's a preliminary one, saying this, you must know it's done and dusted. Look at this one. The president has been inaugurated. He has appointed the ministers. Comrades, he's done. He's done. Even if tomorrow Saturday comes and say the elections were blah, blah, believe you me, it's done. Unless you don't know the history of ZANU. Saturday has mentioned that established legal procedures and processes, yet it is aware that the very same established legal processes and procedures are run by captured judiciary. Probably, comrades, we need also to create a situation when we become united to also target the judiciary in our way to it. Because once we keep on saying Zanu this and that, let's go to those structures that are being used and hit them hard. All regional actors should come clean and stop protecting the ruling party. At the same time, let us tell our people that they are on their own. We call upon them, our people, 
to determinedly resist the oppression and defend the right of different views with no fear of retribution. In conclusion, the stealing of elections by the ruling party has dried the wells of democracy and they created a systematic corrosion of suffocation we can't breathe of anyone with views different from the ruling party we need to be the architects of the future not its victims but the way we are doing things we are becoming the victims of the future very soon these young men i'm seeing here they will be gray hair in foreign lands having nothing still talking the way we're doing instead of what this kind of a setup must be organized for us to talk about development in our country and then we need to be uh, okay Zabu has a culture as I've said of consultation compromise it, was, it means we are prepared to engage with all political formations, with all national forces, with all civil societies, <laughs> as long as it is about the Zimbabweans. This notion, which has been created by Zanu PF, that is ZAPU because it was led by a, 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 a Ndebele, is a Ndebele party, that is wrong. If you look at the top 10 of Zapu during the struggle, five, six or seven were Shona speaking people. Maybe three or four, they were in Demele. This was, this was, and it is, and it will be a national party. Hence, I want also to call with guys, as we come in, remember all of us, we began this long in 1957. We have not reached where we are going. And what we see, we see the mushroom of all of us. This one wants this, this one wants that, Zap wants that, Sisi wants that. Until we take the word of all these ANC people. Remember these ANC people, the SSP, Comrade Mabena, including uh, uh, Kosato, they have been telling Zap one thing and this was also told by mdc that you guys in zimbabwe you are too divided on your own and you are not going to defeat that enemy they have been telling us that, that we are too divided there is this um, sitting suspicion amongst ourselves we cannot bring us what together that has become dangerous that's why we are in this predicament Therefore, we need all sincere political formations and national forces to unite to protect the country. We believe every citizen should play an active role in the electoral decision-making process. Promoting of dialogue the way it has been promoted. We need these things to be promoted. So there is dialogue within Zimbabweans. Continuous dialogue. And then we need exchange of ideas as we are doing here. We need to discuss policies. We need uh, to build trust amongst ourselves in order for us to achieve our goals. Remember, electoral politics has failed. ZAPU has begun with the engagement of all stakeholders in order to come out with a formidable solution. So what we request, comrades, is that we know the elections have been stolen. They don't talk about that. We know there's a need of a reformed ZAC, and it must happen now. And we cannot compromise that in order for us to achieve this, including the reforming of the judiciary. We need to come together as a united front. And we are saying, thank God that we are seeing what is happening to CCC, which means even if tomorrow Zapu becomes a formidable force and is voted into power, there might be challenges of 
taking the power from or Zanu surrendering the power. Because Zanu knows that all those old guys who were in Zipra, they are now old. Some are dead. There is nothing they can do. So we need to be united. We were all supposed to say, all of us come together, we stand up and say, let there be free and fair elections. Before any election is done, any election is done, these reforms must be accepted. Not only accepted, it must be in, they must be endorsed by the international committee. committee. And the comments, the international committee is not the West. Talking about everybody here. And this issue of uh, sanctions, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. You apply sanctions to a country and you still keep your ambassadors in that country. You ap ap sub apply sanctions to that country, but you still buy their minerals. You still run your own factories in that country. Comrades, sanctions are being mentioned. But believe you me, there are proxy companies that are busy joining ZANPF and the DPS, ZANPF and EU, ZANPF and America. Why at least we are being told in all these discussions that there are sanctions, there are sanctions. There are even people who are fronted to talk about the end of sanctions which do not exist. I am not affected by any sanctions in any way. What is affecting me is what ZANPF is doing. That's why I'm here. That's why Lastly, Dabeng was said during the 2013 election, he was talking to me. We were driving to Pinoni to meet some guys there. He said, you know what? The way we have done things, all of us in Zimbabwe, leadership of all political parties, we have done it that during the 2013 elections, Zimbabwe will never be the same again. <coughs> After the 2013 elections, he said, do you remember what I told you? I said, yes. And we were also surprised that is an PF ideally I think we spoke about all this. They must change all these things. They must involve everybody. They must do it. And they agreed. That's why I was speaking to you boldly that 2013 Zimbabwe will never be the same again. But it seems we are back to square one. So, guys, let's devise a plan. It's what he said. So in other words, there has been some engagement. By the way, the reason why Zapu pulled out of the Union Court was because whatever evil things, whatever suppression, whatever oppression Zanu was doing, the Zapu leadership which was in that unit accord was also blamed by the people who were uh, 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 affected by what Zanu was doing. That's why there was no other way but to pull out. And remember, don't forget, we did not go to ZANU as ZAPU. We went to ZANU as PF ZAPU. There are two different things between PF ZAPU and ZAPU. PF ZAPU was born on the eve of 1930, or 1980 elections. How? They had agreed in Lancaster that they were supposed to go and contest the elections as the patriotic front the same year they went to Lancaster. But when they came back, ZANU PF with its tricks, it went behind ZAPU and registered ZANU PF as a political party to contest the elections until the closing day which was on a Friday, and they were closing, I'm told, at 2 o'clock. At 12 o'clock, this white man, I've forgotten his name, calls Ngomo, Ngomo, when are you coming to register to vote? Kanti, is Zapu not contesting for elections? But you know, okay, we spoke, and then with Zanu, is, this is what's going to happen. No, Zanu has come, and they've registered the election. Ngomo mm. asked, under what name? Said under ZANPF, mm. then Nkomo quickly sent Elder 
Joseph Msika, run, winner, go and register as PF Zap. Then PF Zap was born. So I'm saying, you may think of Mkakao, we may think of Zipa. Nothing being done Zanu is amazing or new. It has always been like, unfortunately, there are good people, very good people in Zanu who see what is happening. But I don't want us to criticize them just, but we're saying, their history has not been a history that has taken Zimbabwe forward or will take Zimbabwe forward. It has just been chaotic. So comrades, elections were stolen. We call upon everybody. Let's come together, devise a plan, united so, and say, Uti, what can you do? But our target must be Zek and the judiciary. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Baba Mpondo. Uh, without trying to give you any ideas, I wish to hear one day the president was up with Kuluma Ganj. Yeah, because then I've got a, a correction to make. Jenga uh, Nkomo East, I'm a Zapu child myself. Uh, the only time that Zapu contested as PF Zapu was in 1985. In 1980, they contested as Patriotic Front. That's a correction there. Sesisiya Wuma Pena, the Komanisi Edeli. Let's be ready to be educated. <laughs> Let's be ready to hear I'm a sweet sounding some things. I don't know if they will be effective, but after that, just an announcement to make. Gule Studio 7 Lapa, they will hold Ama if you are free. I'm a one-on-one -on -one interviews with you, I'm a speakers. And then they also requested for ETW radio, it's a German radio, Deutsche Vela. They want a 15-minute uh, debating session between I'm a speakers as well. And in my other life, I'm a journalist. So I will take down I'm a names of the speakers here especially because the spokesperson and the SG for some certain reasons blocked me on all channels. <laughs> so I can't reach out to them, so we can't interview Zapu. And people want to hear is Zapu Kuluma something. So we're going to take your names whenever you are free. If your party clears you, we have a studio downstairs where we engage with politicians and we're also planning to have longer political debates which, which will be screened live on YouTube. Thank you very much. Can we now welcome our comrade Mabuto Mapena, the General Secretary of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, comrade uh, Patriot and Policy Mube. Sorry. <laughs> Does not want to be addressed as a comrade Patriot and Policy Mube uh, for guiding us. Um, thank you so much, Comrade Arnold Sululu. It's my first time to hear about the e-movement. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade Trust and Love. I'm sure you will deal with the issue of records uh, when you come back again. I thought you were going to address it. Um, thanks, Comrade Dingilizo <coughs> Mpondo. Uh, I thought you were going to uh, talk about Back to back six, what it means. Uh, uh, but you then spoke of triple C, uh, the three C's, not triple C. <laughs> uh, comrades, we are in the middle of a conflict in Palestine. We stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. In this part of the world, we sometimes think that. Uh, the modern state of Israel is the biblical Israel. When we give solidarity to the people of Palestine, biblical verses are thrown at us, which say, pray for peace in Jerusalem. In church, those who go to church, sing songs about the new Jerusalem. Some then mistaken the Jerusalem that, that we have there as the new Jerusalem. Hence, 
they then quote the Bible and say there must be peace. Pray for peace in palace uh, in, in New Jerusalem. The Jews, the Jews that occupy the land of Palestine, if you look into the map, they arrived in 1948 in that land. They've been occupying, they've taken, literally taken <coughs> over the land of the people of Palestine. It's an apartheid state, worse than the apartheid state that we had in this country. So we call on all revolutionaries, comrades, to give solidarity to the people of Palestine. We do not stand with Israel. We oppose what President Joe Biden said when he says they will be standing with Israel. We stand with the victims. These are the people of Palestine. In 1993, President Bill Clinton facilitated the signing of the Oslo Agreement, which spoke of a two-step solution, which he then we supported, so that the people of Palestine and people of Israel would live in peace alongside each other as neighbors. But Israel has been violating every peace accord, every agreement in the peace accord. They've used the peace accord agreement to continuously uh, take more land from the people of Palestine. This is why today we support the dismantlement of the Israel state. We want people of Palestine to live in peace. So comrades, we call on you to give solidarity to the people of Palestine. They are victims of Zionism. And they are Christians in Palestine. They are Christians and the Muslims in Palestine. So it is not necessarily a religious war that is happening. It's not a war among us, the Christians and the Muslims. So we, we stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Well, Patriot uh, Mkwa, today is, uh, we are learning we, we are learning from comrades. Uh, Comrade Trust speaks of social change as their ideology is very interesting. We hope that at some point, uh, not today because there's no time, we will continue to engage to unpack what they mean by social change uh, so, so that we understand where they stand as a triple thing. Uh, he speaks about the transitional authority uh, we have already spoken about this in other platforms, that is the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We do not support the transitional authority as packaged by Professor Ipo Mandaza when he was making a presentation at, at, uh, uh, at the O'Ara Tambo uh, Political School. Uh, we, we are learning also about the human rightism as an ideology for Zapu. Uh, it's quite interesting we will continue to engage with comrades in Zapu, in Zapu to also understand uh, uh, about this human humanitism uh, as, 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 as an ideology, what it means. The Zimbabwe Communist Party were a Marxist Leninist Party, were scientific socialist. In Zimbabwe, we want to build a social economy, socialist economy. We have said in our programs, in, in our literature, that uh, <clears throat> socialism is not like a remote where you simply press and translate to socialism. We must build a national democratic economy for us to translate to a socialist economy. The Ipo Mandaza theory of a, a transitional authority, which is, is triple C, uh, is buying into it. Uh, it seeks to accommodate the bourgeoisie who are not in government. It's an elitist approach. It does not give power to the working class and the peasants. So th this is why we are, we are opposed to the transitional authority. Hence, we are saying we must build a national democratic economy. How do we build this national democratic economy? First and foremost, because the national democratic economy itself, it is a transitional phase. 
a, a transitional phase to a socialist economy, we must dialogue among us ourselves as the people of Zimbabwe. Political parties that are represented in the Parliament of Zimbabwe, trade union movement, progressive civil society organizations, business, agriculture, because the national democratic economy on its own is not a socialist economic policy. We need to clarify this. We recognize that uh, for us to rebuild the Zimbabwean economy, we have to work with the capital. We need to get our industries back. We need to organize production on our farms or in our farms. We need to work with the traditional leadership uh, to develop our economy in rural communities. We need to develop a national economic plan. And uh, this national economic plan must be developed from village level and it gets adopted at the national level. As the party, the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we are guided by what we call democratic centralism. So we, we do not believe in the top-down approach. This is why it's important that the villagers, people in cities, they engage in the development of economic plan because our resources are different or the local economy, political economy, in our villages is different. If you are in Kezi, you'll know Amatrimbi. Uh, if you are in Gokwe, you know Ikoton uh, Uchind. Uh, so it is different. So we must recognize Oguti Mzimwan, where I come from, is a place that we call the Kon. How do we ensure that the people in Mzimwane and the neighboring areas and the nation at large benefit from the resources, from the gold that, that a, a, a corner a, in our district. How do we benefit together with the people of Manikaland from a, a forest that, that they have a, in, in, the, in that part, part of the country? So this is why we are saying for us to build a national democratic economy, we must reject building an economy that is influenced by imperialist forces. We do not believe that a foreign direct investment is the answer. In, in rebuilding the Zimbabwean economy. In 1991, we adopted neoliberal policies, economic structure adjustment program. And uh, this is the basis that uh, 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 led to the formation of the Movement for Democratic Change in 1999, which of course was hijacked. Uh, the working class came together, they formed the Movement for Democratic Change. It was hijacked. Just like the working class came together formed is up as, as, a, as a liberation movement. It was hijacked by other, other forces. We you, you were spoken in detail about the split in 1963. And uh, 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 the comrade uh, 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 articulates it well and uh, present Zapu as a victim of imperialist forces because the split in 1963 was not based on the question of ethnicity. It was based on ensuring or trying to curtail the influence of the Soviet Union, Cuba, and others to spread in this in this part of the world. Hence, you had then to uh, split the liberation movement, the ZAPU, and the create ZANU, which was created as a puppet of the imperialist forces. Uh, so uh, that's how ZAPU then was hijacked, because the ZAPU had, uh, uh, it was during Cold War, so the MTC equally gets hijacked, particularly during the chaotic land reform program in 2000, taken over by other forces. And the Triple C today, as it stands, uh, it has been run by the NASU and the student leaders. Uh, the working class, uh, they have no role in Triple C. This is why you have a Triple C today. I know Comrade Trust will not agree, but. Uh, this is a, a, what, what, what we call constructive criticism. It has abandoned the structures of the working class. It has been driven by, stu by students, to student leaders, who come up with the funny concepts. Hence, ZANU-PF has been able to turn Triple C to what it is today. The recalls, which I'm saying Comrade Trust did not speak to, because you cannot have someone 
if it's a well organized political formation you cannot have someone who wakes up in the morning and says i'm the secretary general i'm writing to the speaker of parliament i'm recalling everyone it cannot be but because uh, you you have abandoned the organizational principles of a, of a movement that is up against the system. And, and then you think you are going to survive under that environment. And then instead, instead of to self-introspect on where you went, went wrong, you then begin to say, no, let's dis, dis engage, disengage from parliament until this is resolved. You are taking your internal problems to ZANU-PF and they give ZANU-PF credit. The soldiers, we saw the video that, that the, some American journalists uh, took when he was buying some soldiers uh, beer, Russian beer. They were saying to him, we're earning 140 US dollars, just like any other civil servants. The soldiers, the CIO, uh, people in the security sector, they are suffering just like all of us. The only people that are looting, the looting class, the elite, which is a few individuals, are the ones that are controlling the economy. So when, when you then have a mass movement that, that, that has abandoned all organizational principles, where you then create cultism, and uh, this cultism began, but Umpo says always to me, no, you see, Comrade Maben, uh, there's this thing in Zimbabwe, which is now a tradition where people worship a leader, it differ. That, that's the slogan, it differ. And you are presenting it D, without it D, there's no ZANU PF, it differ. There is no ideological meaning, there's nothing. It's an empty slogan which seeks to elevate an individual above an organization. Teachers for it D, nurses for it D, pastors for it D. That's a Zanuism slogan. Then you repeat it in the opposition. Chamisa Chetechet. And they raise him above the movement. I was saying in March 2022, when I recorded a video, which I started circulating today, I said, yes, it is true that every liberation, every mass movement is a poster boy was the figurehead of, of, of that movement. But that does not mean you must worship and elevate the person to cultism. And Comrade Vavi was correct when he said a dictator is not born. No one is born a dictator. You hit a, a dictator will not be hitting a much majority drums who are now coming and say we are going up. No. It is us, those that are closer to the lead. That, that, that created the dictatorship. <clears throat> now, the, the third point that, that, that I want to talk to <clears throat> is the whole question of election. Because for us to, to talk about the stolen election in, 20, in 2023, the previous elections and so forth, we must first and foremost understand the class character of the Zimbabwean state. Zimbabwe is a deep milita militaristic state. The question that, that we are confronted with is can you dismantle a deep state through an election? Uh, I, I've been uh, 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 talking to comrades trying to understand can you dismantle a deep state? We could not dismantle the colonial state in Rhodesia, notwithstanding the military might that we had, Zebra. And the sun, but we could not. We were forced to negotiate and dunkest the house. We could not dismantle a deep state in 1908. We were to enter into a compromise, which the elections with the com comrade has already spoken that were supervised by Lord Soms. South Africa went through negotiations, Cortez. Notwithstanding, um, controversies, everyone supported um, controversies, or APLA. You could not dismantle militarily the apartheid state. <clears throat> this then, this is where then uh, Kwame Kroma then characterizes correctly. Because if you study the whole of Africa, if you look into Guinea, 
when when Fr France was was uh, 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 in the 1950s uh, saying those colonies should accept either to be part of the French colon or gain independence, it was Guinea which said no. Comrade Torres said no. What did they do, the French, when they left? They to break everything, uproot everything, pouring concrete even in the toilets. Because they wanted to force their colonies to accept what was known as the French community. This is why even today, some countries in West Africa are still paying colonial tax to France. This is, the, uh, in the, if you understand the military coups that are happening in West Africa today, it is in rejection of French imperialism in that, in that part of the world, which is now being taken over by, by the junior soldiers. So I'm saying Kwame Krum characterized the new independent states as a neo-colonial state. In other words, you can have your black president, black prime minister, black cabinet, your flag, sing your national anthem, but you're not in control of your own economy. The Zimbabwe has moved from being a neo-colonial state. Zimbabwe is different from South Africa. The comrade talks about us marching to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, uh, marching to the judiciary. He has identified the key state apparatus in Zimbabwe that, that, that are part of this deep state. So the question therefore remains that uh, how then do you dismantle a deep state? Can you do so through an election? And it has been proven that it cannot happen to dismantle a deep state through an election. So given that, what is to be done to resolve the Zimbabwean crisis? First and foremost, we must build a mass grassroots movement. That's what we need. Because Triple C is not capable, is not capable to lead in terms of dismantling the deep state in Zimbabwe. Organizationally, it is poor, it is weak, it has no structures, it's structureless. Uh, they are organ their structures are in secret, and when they say uh, they, they, they have structures because it's your Gena Nyovan, is Unpefsbangele Nyovan, it is recalling their members of parliament. David Coltard comes up with a brilliant idea of cleaning the city of Bulawayo, mobilizing everyone to clean the city of Bulawayo, and the people are participating in the cleaning. Then the next thing that you hear, which just disengage. Does that mean those beautiful programs then must be suspended? So we must build a mass grassroots movement in Zimbabwe, a movement that is rooted in the mass of our people. A movement that is clearly defined, understands how to run a, an organization. We must build a class conscious citizen in Zimbabwe. Because the biggest challenge that we have currently is that we are in the informal economy. Today, when the Zimbabwe Congress calls a strike, no one joins. It's unlike in 1998 when industries were operating. Why will people not join? Because we are Kotam. And we are saying I should go on strike. We are not in industries. In, in, in 2015, the International Labour Organization, through Resolution 204, resolved that uh, informal sector organizations must be accepted to join trade unions. Because we know that in Zimbabwe, when the Economic Structure Adjustment Program was introduced, people began losing their jobs. The Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions then had to assist retrenched workers to say, for you to survive, get into the informal sector. So in 2015, then the International Labour Organization recognizes this reality 
that you have more workers that have been retrenched that now have gone into the formal economy. So assist them in becoming part of the trade union movement. Our trade unions are weak. So this is why we need to build a class conscious citizen. Because when we talk of building a class conscious citizen, it means we must build a class conscious workers and a peasant. You have today some who go around in the name of labor consultants. They will, they will get some workers, form, uh, form them, uh, organize them into a union. They will go to another sector, organize them into a union, another sector, organize them into a union for simple getting a pay. That, that's, that's what is currently happening in Zimbabwe. So our trade unions are weak. So we need to build the capacity. First and foremost, we must organize them. But how do you organize trade unions when you have no industries? This is why we are now talking of this transitional phase of building a national democratic economy. Because when you build a national democratic economy, you will get your young people into the factories. Once you get your young people into the factories, it is then that you raise their class consciousness at the workplace, intensify political education, organize them into trade unions. Once you have functioning industries in Zimbabwe, it is then that the working class or the workers can then assist to transit. As I conclude, because the comrades always think that when we talk of uh, socialism, they, they always think that, and I'm going to term now, Kuma sound nice sounding things. Some country in South America, the Socialist Party came to power. <clears throat> when, when it came to power, gave Abandon Kong. Because it was always socialism. What did people do? They slaughtered. Just like the chaotic land reform. Land reform. Because now we did not go to war for universal suffrage. We did not go to war, as I always hear about Triple C and others, we went for us to have the right to vote. That's not the reason why I went to war, right? We went to war so that we regain our land, we regain our dignity as the big black people. We then used the issue of voting or universal suffrage as a key strategy tactic because we then said, if all of us then vote as Zimbabweans, including Amakiwa, everyone else, then we'll have the majority ourselves as the black people. So it was a political tactic. But this is not what we, what we went to war for. So the land reform <coughs> program was necessary. It needed to happen. But because we did not raise the class consciousness of the people, and the organization or the party that was driving land reform program. <coughs> it's a party that has no understanding of the scientific socialism. It began to say, allowing a jambanja, tatani land, tatani land, what can you and now we have no protection in Zimbabwe. So as I'm concluding, we need to build a class conscious citizen. We need to win over key state apparatus in Zimbabwe. Who are these key state apparatus? We need to win over the military. Uh, uh, this thing <laughs> from the opposition that says uh, we are going to go to the ballot, uh, the deep state is going to announce you as a winner, you walk into a state house, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's a reality that, that we must accept. Because the state is an organ of class role. <clears throat> it represents the interests of the class that it represents. What you can only have is a change of government. 
you have one government, a Puma, just like you always have in America. One day you have the Democrats, they are in power. The other day you have the Republicans, they are in power. But the deep state in America remains, which is in charge of the American state. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels says, the executive, which is cabinet, they are just but man economic managers of the bosses. Cabinet is just like who can take away flat and shall call. I don't even know the owner of that building, man. Whether you say you're up, you shall call every month, you're told to stimulate 25 to a pen, a patali rent, you're on Ketek. But I don't know the owner of the building. So, governments in this part of the world, they are just like a market takers. Uh, so uh, let, let me thank all of you as uh, a executive director of the African Diaspora Forum that uh, your input assists us as the African Diaspora Forum uh, as we work with the migrants communities because our interest as the African Diaspora Forum is to understand why people are leaving their countries to come to South Africa uh, which earlier on I said it then create problems uh, in communities who are going to an election. The issue of migration is key uh, in the 2024 elections. Last time we had a discussion uh, around Sudan and today Zimbabwe and the African Diaspora Forum will continue to engage with other communities to understand what are the push factors, what can be done to, to resolve these issues because uh, what you are presenting, these are some of the things that uh, we take to our partners, we, we take to governments to say, why don't we resolve this crisis? Because in the case of the SATAC region, we need to industrialize the SATAC region. A South African should go and uh, live in Lilongwe, i 7 Zakon. Migration must not be one way down to South Africa. Uh, people must uh, migrate across, not because so that we can build a peaceful SADAC. But for us to build a peaceful SADAC, it means we must industrialize our, our, our region. But for us to industrialize our, our region, we must resolve our economic crisis. Thank you, comrades. Well, I, I, I agree with Comrade Mapen. So what I'm going to say is just ETC. I'm not subtracting anything. Uh, usually when we have these seminars, who chairs and ATF prepares good food for us. So someone is going to call him. So which means before we move on to the AMA questions, while you prepare your questions that side, for our speakers, if you are representing an organization, stay to represent IP organization and direct your question to whoever you direct to. But while you are still busy preparing your questions, I will take the next three minutes to raise some of the issues that I also hope or I would, that I would also request uh, our speakers as they come to answer your questions to also factor in and answer them as well. The first being uh, on the issue of our sanctions that were raised by uh, Umpondo. And I will tie this with his calls for the opposition to unite. And I would say, uh, I want to believe, let me say, citizens in a country do not just unite or just, don't need to just unite when it comes to trying to remove a, a sitting government or a ruling party, but there should be some issues around which they unite, and these are supposed to be ideological issues. You might not be sharing an ideology, but you need to have certain specifics where you say for the benefit of the country or for the love of the country and these people, we unite around these things. The first one being uh, AMA sanctions, as I have said. Uh, I think as Zimbabweans, especially political parties, what should be a rallying call for us is whatever brings together the people, whatever betters the life of the people, and we also need to unite against everything that affects the life uh, of Avant. And 
we would be propagandists for the West to say oh, there are no sanctions in Zimbabwe. And if you are in doubt, read a document called Zidera. Uh, it doesn't speak to any individual. It speaks about the government of Zimbabwe, officials in the government of Zimbabwe, and this is the basis on which uh, Amapara status, other than the, the looting of ZANU-PF, were dismantled. So we need to agree over to their sanctions, and we need to unite first around the removal of sanctions, whether ZANU-PF is there or not. And we need to also understand Utama sanctions are far in Zimbabwe. Don't buy the lie about human rights abuses. The worst ever human rights abuse that happened in Zimbabwe was the Kukurangi Hundi massacre, in which 20,000 people died. Hundreds of thousands were displaced. There was a media blackout from the West. Why? Because they didn't care about Zimbabweans. <clears throat> All they care about was keeping the hegemon which Mugabe was, pres was preserving for them. Then, in, 2000, in 1998, when Mugabe militarily intervenes in the DRC, where he was fighting rebels sponsored by Rwanda, in Rwanda under a puppet of the West called uh, Paul Kagame, they then said, because they were looting uh, DRC, Ama Minerals at DRC, they said, is Zimbabwe is becoming a problem. Let's sanction them. You will read his data. It states that the rest came as additional issues, but that's where the sanctions were. And over Umpondo, you are from Zabu. Let's say, Tina, if Joshua Nkomo was alive today, would he have supported these sanctions? If, when he ran to the UK for the asylum, when his people were dying, 20,000 Zimbabweans dying, he didn't call for sanctions. Would he support these? Akona Maji, nah. Right, then we move on to say, uh, we also need to correctly structure the argument on the stolen elections. Are we saying these elections were stolen from Triple C, in which case it would mean that this is a Triple C fight in which Mina Jo Mundu TPF or as a journalist have got nothing to do with? But if we say these elections were stolen from Zimbabweans, then every Zimbabwean must fight against those who stole the elections because you stole my right to choose a representative. You didn't steal from Chamisa the right to get into State House or from Triple C the right to have more representatives in the House of Assembly, but you stole from me my right to choose somebody to represent me as I want. Uh, then to Zapu, uh, what is it that you are doing? You have already alluded to the call against the theft of elections, but we believe that as a former liberation movement, you have a role to play, especially where ECCC has been accused of being a puppet of the West. You've got a role to play to say, ANC, we were with you in the struggle. Izanu PF has diverted, has derailed the liberation struggle train. They are now doing as they want, but Tina S. Zapo, we raised these particular issues it's not only Triple C, but the whole opposition in Zimbabwe, including the citizens of Zimbabwe that are suffering under ZANU PF. Then you dilute this narrative of saying uh, these who are calling for a regime change are agents of a regime change who are being sponsored by the West. Then uh, the next is uh, Triple C. Why is it that when times are normal and you are going to elections, you don't care about the other opposition parties. You always call them puppets of ZANU-PF, surrogates of ZANU-PF, vote splitters. And only, and you also declare that you are going to win. I listen to Chamisa saying Nanga Kwa has got no chance to rig the elections this time. Then just before the elections, he declares that he's not going to accept any election which puts Nanga Kwa ahead of him. Then the next thing, after voting, he writes on Twitter, Blow by blow accounts claiming that he's in the lead, he's winning despite the rigging. Come election announcement, he has lost, then he goes back and says, I was rigged. All along, in 2018, he said the same thing. Morgan Swangirai said he's going to win 74% with or without the rigging in 2013. Now Chamisa does the same thing, and then he comes back 
he complains of rigging. Does this not then uh, give a neutral like me the feeling that these are sour grapes? He thought he was going to win and then he has lost. And then soon after losing, he says, we've got the V11s, they put us in the lead, we have, we're collating them, we're taking them to court. Eventually he's got nothing and he's now going to Twitter demanding V11s from Zek on Twitter, which means that he doesn't have anything because if you claim that you've been rigged, you must prove. You don't win elections because the other guy played foul. You win because you outpolled them. And vote figures are scientific, which means these V11s are the ones that you should say, yes, there were gross irregularities, but based on the results that we have, we won here, they tried to manipulate, but these are the V11s. Then it turns out, in more than, maybe you're going to also respond to that, in more than a thousand polling stations, you didn't have polling agents. Now, which means you didn't have these V11s that you are claiming to have. Then how does that then keep the, the trust that people are putting on you because you've always betrayed them? Uh, then uh, I would also say as a, a passing point that I believe the only way that we can go forward, let's forget about this vote splitting uh, narrative which doesn't exist. If Zimbabwe were to go back to the proportional representation, proportional representation mechanism and devolution of power, I believe that we're going to have more parties, even these so-called Smolanyana parties, going into parliament and diluting this bipolar political setup, which pits one pole against the other in a way that at the end of the day, we have toxic politics without any care for the people. Now, having said that, I'll open the floor to our questions. Uh, my name is Jonathan Bezi. Uh, my question will go to Mr. Silulu uh, uh, from the movement. Uh, you spoke about the that we have, should have many political parties in uh, our country because our country is small. It's not like the United Kingdom or United States. Uh, but the main, the, we have seen a lot of political parties participating in uh, 2018. I think uh, we had about 23 people who uh, wanted to be a president and there are about 103 political parties, I think so. So, and then most of them they just uh, for now that we don't see them because we uh, have the Dma, Nikas, the uh, Shumbas, and all those guys, we don't see them now. So, which thing which can make us, uh, which will make, make those other political parties seen uh, contested in 2028 or other uh, years to come? Uh, th that is my question. And then I will come again to Mr. Uh, we call him by his name, I don't know, Trust. Uh, no. His name? His name? Mr. Ndob uh, from Triple uh, C. You spoke about. Uh, uh, I just want to ask a question about. Uh, uh, I think Triple C was uh, saying that uh, this time around uh, we have got everything covered. <coughs> I think there was this thing, the te uh, technology thing, which was called Manda. Ma it's Manda. Yeah. They will see everything which is happening on everything on top of Mount Dwarin, whatever. They will be seeing everything happening. And then there will be no uh, rigging. But uh, now you are crying again about rigging. So it's where I just want to know that you guys you came and then you said that these elections, we want to have. Uh, even though uh, uh, ZANU PF is uh, uh, are rigging elections, but this time around we will never rig elections. But now you are crying about rigging. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, I'll take the two. Then we was open. Then we take another round. Uh, my question goes to Ikomanis uh, Wapapen. Uh, you spoke about these different negotiating. 
a, a Lancaster house and they spoke up with about the Ndabe protest when NC together with MK negotiated with the apartheid regime. They had a, a Martin, as long as they were in power for them to actually go and sit down with the deep state to say that they are now negotiating uh, for a change of government or, or whatever. Tina now is Zimbabwe. Do we have a bargaining power or do we still have to go back to the drawing board and maybe have a military wing uh, to say that I, if we ever <laughs> we have to go to war, we have a opinion that we can go toe to toe with you guys, no matter what you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, program director. Uh, Nelson Mandela wrote a book called Don't Move to Freedom, which I believe in Zim is not yet to hold and we are still working. Uh, why am I saying that is because uh, when Zanpiv took over from ANC, it did not change anything. It continued the Jomik, we see that joint military command, <coughs> which was formed by ANC in 1965. <coughs> Till today, it is still existing. The laws, OI, by and so on and so forth. They might have been changed cosmetically here and there, but it's still the laws that were used by Yen Smith. When is it going to be who oh, comrade, uh, comrade Mapen, <coughs> and then comrade from uh, Triple C? Um, the other issue that I, I want to check with us, especially the uh, Zimbabwean political formations, is the lack of a, a spirit of resistance. There's nothing. There's nothing. Surely, if donors are continuously funding us, they are just flashing their money in the toilet or flashing the money in the sea. I feel they are doing that. Because look what happened um, in, the, in the event of the MDC Alliance. Formed, there was massive funding. Two months down the line, the part was completely dismantled. Uh, it failed to, to, to defend uh, its, 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 its position as a political party. Come again this year we are seeing the very same thing. History is continuously repeating itself. When shall we build strong, formidable political uh, uh, <coughs> parties that can withstand any, any pressure from the system that they are fighting against? So I think it's about time that we come up with form formidable systems and so on and so forth. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Lastly, the other issue on the spirit of resistance, Comrade, um, I feel Triple C is not doing enough, especially to issue our job scala. A, 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 maybe I don't know. Should I say all <coughs> human rights-based activists and so on, and even political parties? Because the Scala is not fighting for maybe for Triple C, but it's fighting for all of us. The party is not doing enough to to create systems and challenges that will completely a, 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 a ensure that Ujo Scala is actually released from the prison. <coughs> this is where is and we have started to to sense that. As long as the color is inside there and there's no pressure that is mounted uh, against the system to remove or release the skull, surely come the election to be a walk off. The issue of the gold mafia, we absolutely, that was massaged. Uh, there's nothing that Zimbabwean state, and even those that have more power than others, they completely did nothing. What are, where was Zinasu? Where was ZCTU? Does ZCTU still exist? Where was the Triple C on a, a part that is full of royal. We, we, we were expecting that they should have taken that matter to the High Court, even to the Constitutional Court, because it's a constitutional issue. Even today, the man is still la la languishing behind the prison and so on and so forth. The, the critical Congress trust a Congress, whether we like it or not, it must be there. Because as long as there are no structures, the system will always dribble past. A party and completely destroy it and, and have its own people. Because now that that, that man is already saying Uchamisa is not the president, the next thing when he's taken to court, he will say, Who elected him? They not they were not delegates and so on and so forth. We endorsed him to be a presidential candidate. You know, it's fine. You say it, it's it's there's a word that you have used to say it uh, ambiguity. Strategic uh, ambiguity. Strategic ambiguity. ambiguity. I, I'm telling you. Of course, for some time, not for permanent purposes. You know, it, it's, it's a self-defeatist strategy, if that is the charge that the party will have to, to come up with. Um, sometime I went to, when I was still the MDC Youth League, 
deputy chairperson, I went to, 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 to Derry, where I was invited by a bishop, um, this, this Indian bishop, um, <coughs> who was an anti apartheid activist, Bishop Philip. Yeah, I were called in to go and we were told to say we must unpack our ideology as a part. You need to define what you mean by change, democratic change. The word democratic must be unpacked, the word change must be unpacked, and so on and so forth. So you need to I clearly have a clear ideology, would ideology in him. These are a set of principles, obvious. But your own lay, lay people in the street must be able to unpack so that everybody can understand with what type of an animal is this, can I join it, and so on and so forth. And if we're talking of democracy, we must don't just maybe interpret the word democracy. It, we must do it also even in our dates. It must be clear that if we talk of democracy, we mean democracy. Not another way around and so on and so forth. And I feel our parties don't define and, and, and we can define, but we act left. Talk right, but act left. That's many times that what has been done. I don't know, I want to have a lot of questions. Uh, okay, program director, maybe let me uh, end there. Uh, and okay. a new, lastly, a new idea called human rights is called. Uh, yes. um, but maybe my last question to Zaku why is Zaku in a field down at the presidential a candidate? You know, because we're hoping that another a, a, a alternative is being actually created uh, in, in our region. Because there's nothing, there's no political political parties in our region. We thought this up has come, has arrived, but there was nothing. And, and there was no proper explanation. You know, why was it not why didn't it actually fill the presidential candidate? If it happens today that is going to be a national dialogue, who's going to represent it? Because they will say only those that uh, uh, participated in the presidential election will be the principals. The rest will be nothing. <coughs> so on and so forth. So I think that's something that maybe that should be thought about to say, shouldn't we, we feel, yes, money issue, yes, it was a problem, but I think this time is up for standing a better chance to have a lot of comrades funding and so on and so forth. Okay. So yeah, those were a few questions. Um, in the interest of time, Zakala Mpondo, Maya Suga, and so the Ibuye Lapa, Ibuye Trusty, Ibuye Silulu, Inuma Pen. Thank you. Thank you, comrade, for eating Alan a question. Leo, as a president, is up not filled as a president. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, a statement was uh, issued uh, to that effect. Uh, to cut short it um, more around the, the resources. Or let me, put, let me put it this way. It might sound uh, somehow, but this is the truth. Um, during between 2009 <clears throat> and uh, 2012, there was a serious uh, a, a debate in the parliament, yes, uh, uh, England, about Tukuti Zapu has uh, been saying uh, So the woman who said that, uh, or who brought that motion, was uh, talking about that uh, Zapu must be taken to task, Nama human rights abuse, as they called it, especially focusing on the two planes that were brought by, down by the zebra. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're quite aware of them. So, so at the end of the day, we are very clear that there was again a campaign to many organizations not to fund Zapo, and that one's. It is there, it is known by the very same people in UK. So the reason why we did not, it was because that's why I mentioned when I was presenting that uh, the cost of participation was definitely meant to cut us off because somebody knew that uh, as far as resources are concerned, we did not have any resources. And uh, you mentioned that there could have been comrades or uh, uh, our people who were prepared to fund uh, uh, Zabu. Believe of me, as people who, of which I'm part, who have been involved in uh, sourcing out resources, we never came across such. It was different from what 
we received from 2008 up until 2013 elections. There, there were many people came forward uh, who with resources. But currently, the reason why we did not, it was because of, uh, 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 of resources. Uh, 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 that was the only uh, 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 reason I, I can mention. Although, our statement to that effect is elaborated by the spokesman of Zabu about why, besides resources, what other issues that might have contributed to that. And then the next one is that um, uh, the issue of sanctions. The reason why I mentioned sanctions as not being there is that the current regime is using sanctions in order to oppress us, in order not to develop the country, in order to loot. So they make us focus on the sanctions. Whereas, Bona, in within the midst of those sanctions, they are benefiting a lot. They are rich. They are having everything, including someone mentioned the, the gold mafia, which we know has been happening. So they, to us citizens, often they are using sanctions. So we must have this perception that the reason why we are suffering, we are like this, the reason why they cannot develop, the reason why I don't have all other material and or rather the, the Zambez water project cannot be finished is because of sanctions. I, I, I was trying to get to make us understand the, 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 the issue of the sanctions is being used by people who seem to be progressing within those sanctions. And then the other thing was that uh, unfortunately the person who, who asked about uh, ideology, human rightism has gone out. So I will guess uh, I will have to pass that before I come to the one no, that benefit. <laughs> before I came to that one uh, 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 which, um, alright, let me put it this way. Mm. The speaker here, Comrade Mapena, he mentioned why we went to war. That is 100% correct. We went to war for land, but beside the land being taken away from us, there were also many inequalities within the, 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 the country that were created by the, 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 the imperialist. Within those, part of them, there were human abuse, or rather, eh, 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 we did not have equal rights with the whites. So as such, the same problem of being suppressed of being uh, 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 um, abused, uh, uh, of being oppressed, we still experience it now. Okay, I see the Gukura only because they did whatever they did, which is written all over. People are speaking about it. Currently, as we speak, for example, if we took 2008 when it was assumed that uh, MDC had won the elections. We all know what happened in Marshallland, where there was this pro our culture program, although it was an, an evil program, I'll call it, whereby people come and ask you, do you want a long sleeve or a short sleeve? Where people were cut arms or were cut whatever, whatever. That was the abuse. Cu currently, it continues in other forms, no human rights. The fact, Yoguchi, I am not benefiting in the economic structure. The fact, Yoguchi, there's no equality socially. The fact that politically we can't express ourselves. We don't have freedom in all France. As a citizen, I am not free in a country where I'm supposed to be free. I cannot speak free. There's no freedom of speech at all. There is nothing. That's why at the end of the day, we are all over the world. It is because the system has designed AMA systems in Zuchi. When I look at it, I feel I am not counted. When I try to be counted, 
there is always victimization which also goes with serious suffocation so i refer to that as the abuse of power as the abuse of ama rights and then the, the 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 role of zapu currently what is the role of zapu currently comrades the reason why zapu was uh, 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 left a human uh, uh, left into a court is because as Kumar Mabena puts it it was back, back to basics what we began in 1940 in 1957 had not been done only what we observed was a systematic erosion or corrosion of EE government government that did not care for people government that did not take the interest of the people what it may be in all fronts so as zapu we felt with the time has come for us as zapu to stand up and they unite the zimbabweans the same manner we united them when we began the revolution to 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 uh, 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 defeat the imperialists so we ca we are coming together saying zimbabweans unite uh, 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 under zapu so that we finish what we began in 1957 so that we can look into the interest of each and every Zimbabweans. We are calling all Zimbabweans that this is the time, the only party which has got a history. And okay, let me put it this way. You remember when we were fighting. It's not everybody who went to exile who was trained militarily. Some people were posted or were sent to various countries to be trained as teachers, to be trained as doctors, as civil servants. So because the leadership realized that we are going to take the country, what about if the very same British do what uh, the French did in the French colonies? So they had to begin to prepare the people. When we take a country we must not be found wanting there must be these people who are ready to to to, to run the government hence we, it was sometimes called a government in exile so when those people when we got our independent believe you me the first three to four to five years the ZANPF government was able to run the country because the same people who were sent by uh, Zapu were the ones who were running the government. But when they began to systematically remove them, then the ZANU government began to crumble because they were now putting people who were not experienced in jobs or in departments or uh, in places where it, it needed Abantu who had the knowledge so therefore this is to show that Izapu had a program so we are saying the same programs that we had during the struggle before there was a split is the same thing the same program that we had when the split was there we still have the same program we call everybody to come and say let's come and develop our country for, for example now uh, uh, many people are having land Many people have occupied farms, and they, uh, 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 someone, I think it's Mabena, who has put it that you get the land, but you don't have any resources to work the land. So, as Zapu, we are saying, it is our duty to see to it now when we come to power, there is this development, and this development must be done through a devolution of power. If I'm not mistaken, Comrade Mabena called it democratic centralism, but he covered uh, 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 both peasants and the workers. Uh, 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 we are saying, through a devolution of power, it will make us realize that here is a place like now there are diamonds in Brunabek. The people of Brunabek must be able to control those diamonds, to be involved in them, to see that those diamonds develop Brunabek. There are diamonds in Somabul. The people of the Mekins must 
have a say must be involved to see to it that whatever is done with those diamonds it makes the people to be developed i can talk so many things about it for example we've got this kind of a, 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 a problem in matebe land which the british tried to solve in 1921 the problem of a, 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 a water shortages when they a, 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 uh, came with the plan Yema Tebelen Zamezo water project. Until now, it is still stagnant because not <coughs> because there are no funds, but somebody does not want to, to, to make that a reality because it is on a particular region. So as such, we are saying, as a, those are part of the things that we should do. Remember, when that project is done, when that project is complete according to the original plan, it must come until Epulukwan, which means everybody from uh, 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 Matebele North, uh, 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 Victoria Falls, until Epulukwan must benefit from uh, 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 this project. And uh, within, within, the, 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 that belt, a green belt must be created where the water pipe is. A green belt must be created whereby people can do all sorts of businesses. So as up, we do have a clear plan and our plan is, it, it involves respecting our plan it involves development through its evolutional power. Our plan involves Involving everybody coming together, eh, eh, eh. I know people will say when Zapu went to war, they were talking about socialism, eh, communism. But hardly do we hear the current leadership talking about those. And then somebody nearly answered it when he said, When you talk of democracy, you begin to understand that the democracy of my sister might be different from of Nube, might be different from of Umapena. But when it comes to socialism, we are very clear about the kind of socialism. Okay, let me put it this way. As a history or a former history teacher, when I look at how Karl Marx developed the five stages of theory, that is capitalism, communism, socialism, slavery, and feudalism. He is clear about how he narrates them. I like it when he says, socialism is the highest stage of development, which means before you reach communism, you must reach socialism so that when you go down to communism, you must have demonstrated as a government what this is done. This can be done. And then, that's exactly the kind of system that we want, whereby the government takes control, the government takes control of all means of production, and they give people the power, and they demonstrate to the people how these things are done. Our problem is that once you mention socialism and communism, Stalinism comes to mind. I called Stalinism because what Stalin did was definitely, according to me, was not Marxism, was not Leninism. It was his own, according to me, it was all his own policies. Because the way he did it, it was very delicate. So, 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 example, we have got this big project and we believe would if everybody comes we become united we push this agenda we are going to win in zimbabwe and we are going to see the lives of people being improved and we are going to see it difference would between 1980 until now there has been a big vacuum if it was up this vacuum could not have existed and then the last one, uh, Comrade. Um, oh, you said you're not called Comrade. Uh, That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Baba. Uh, thanks for the correction of uh, PF. PF. Uh, PF. 
I will just go and verify, but thanks very much for raising that one. And then again, I also want to uh, talk about the issue of uh, the Lancaster House. Um, um, Mamili Sabe says the problem why there was Lancaster they realized it immediately when Margaret Thatcher landed in Zambia and he was seen dancing with Kaunda and they knew Ugutini, the revolution something's happening I, I am not of the notion that Zanda and Zipra were costing, or rather, Zap and Zan were costy into negotiations because it, it, it wasn't that there was a win. When Zipra announced the zero hour, that's when the British realized Uguti, is zero hour meant capture and hold, which means every if we capture. If we kept her uh, uh, um, Cholocho, let's take it and begin administrating and begin working. It's now ours. If we kept her Lupani, let's begin to work. So that was the zero hour. Capture and hold. The British realized what if is the, the the power with the power that he had, if it continues or is allowed to, to practice he capture and hold. It was going to mean an outright win of this black majority. There was not going to be any negotiations for the whites according to the, to, to, to the British. So therefore, what they did, they had to go to Kaunda and say, no, time has come for negotiations. For us to stop this system of is zero hour, a capture and, uh, and hold. Let's open our negotiations. That's how they opened. The Ben was seals it when he says on his way to Lancaster House, he fired a Moscow. The Russians told him exactly what they uh, If you agree, you must know that you have sold the revolution. And uh, Dabengwa says, I arrived at Lancaster. I called Umdala, who seemed unwilling. This is the idea of the British. Then he says, um, that, I know that. He has just told me, if we don't go with these negotiations, we might find ourselves seeing a Senandawe operation because he now wants to remain with the ANC. Then Uti, I knew Uti, we had no choice but to continue in the Lancaster House Agreement. It wasn't as Ikotesa. It was something very different because we were in a state whereby in Mozambique, in Zambia, we're actually going to cut our operations if we had refused the Lancaster House negotiations. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Program Director. <coughs> Uh, I see many issues have been raised and some questions were uh, raised during the presentations. So I'll try to cover what I can remember and you can remind me what I've left out. But first and foremost, of course, I want to give our solidarity to the people of Palestine. <coughs> uh, we feel very much uh, bad what is happening there. Uh, those people are oppressed, those people, I think uh, the world at large have not done ju justice. Okay. They have not done justice to the people of Palestine. A lot of theories have been thrown which confuse people, like uh, Comrade Mabena have said. But I wanted to address, uh, <laughs> to say something in the presence of the program director. So I will come to the issue of sanctions when he's here. He have raised a good number of questions when he was talking about sanctions and when he commented about the triple C 
the winning of the triple C and the sound thing which sound like the contradictions in the triple C uh, on elections. <clears throat> Maybe perhaps let me just quickly uh, respond uh, directly to the questions raised first by uh, Mr. Mbezi. Uh, you talked about uh, the teams like the Mandla system, the Pachedu, I think those who, yeah, who say we used to say that before the elections that are this time uh, we got Zanpf, uh, they won't be able to rig. Uh, it's unfortunate that they also relied on our polling agents, uh, on the information that we uh, collected from uh, the constituencies. It was so. Uh, in terms of uh, polling agencies, even though we managed to put uh, all the polling agencies, but most of them were discarded by ZANPF, the fuzzy system, the fuzzy uh, in far remote areas where you would need people to take care of, uh, I mean, uh, for security. It was not easy in our, uh, in our remote areas to protect uh, uh, some of our polling agencies. So yes, some of the information uh, in terms of V11 were not uh, properly collected. But the one that we managed to collect, they still produce results which shows that we we won. We were more better than uh, ED. Even the one that we suppressed. You would also understand that uh, why uh, some information were not properly recorded, uh, that even some observers uh, who were uh, part of uh, collecting information, uh, who, who people like Pachedu and, the, uh, and, and this uh, Manda system, they were also relying on those people. They, they were harassed, uh, and they, their gadgets, uh, they were taken, and uh, that's how uh, the, 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 the IT system of these guys could not uh, collect everything conclusively and uh, come up with scientific uh, conclusions. But however, <laughs> we must also know uh, that the ZAN-PF, uh, the ZEC itself, did not uh, publicize all the results of the V11, so they they only you know it's like someone who works on a mathematical question problem, you just come and give the answer. You don't show how you came to the answer, and in fact they even removed quickly from their website their results when they were pressured by the people at large to say, but you. you you claim these numbers, can you substantiate? They quickly removed everything. And we all know that ZANPF, they rule by iron. Uh, they are like a, they are a military a deep state. The government of ED, the military deep state, like um, uh, Mr. Mabena have, have, have indicated. So the other issue again on that, the other issue again, is that uh, yes, we have we have the results. We know what has happened, but how will it help help us if we, even if we pursue that route? We did pursue that route during 2018. We went to the courts. We know what Malawa did. So uh, through you know consultation with the other uh, people, <coughs> stakeholders in the country. Uh, we realize that it is a futile exercise to go on and try to prove uh, to ZEC and the ZANPF government uh, what we have uh, achieved. It was still going to be cooked one way or another. So we decided to say, no, let's keep it this way. Let's fight for, uh, uh, let's pressure the international community. Let's pressure our SADC region. Let's also pressure our AU. Uh, to look at what happened uh, during the flawed process. So it was not going to help us to, to focus on, uh, on figures. Uh, 
Mr. Mabena. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it's a gentleman series. <laughs> okay, Comrade Mabena. <clears throat> yeah. I know you are ideologically, you know, uh, enshrined and uh, trained so much, and uh, I respect that. But um, when you were giving your your explanation uh, when you stated that uh, uh, because we have a deep state and you cannot remove uh, a government of military deep state through elections. I followed very attentively. I wanted to hear the solution, the proper way of getting out of it. But I started to lose your confidence when you you, you, you tell us about the uh, class consciousness, about uh, how the uh, mass uh, economic de de development must be done, and uh, at the, uh, and you tell us that all the election, all the uh, in the end negotiations are important. We end up, we end up with the negotiating, and uh, uh, I, then it reminded me where the patriots was that you, you, you speak very sweet sounding words, <laughs> but uh, in reality, they, there's nothing really tangible in terms of solution to that. Uh, you know very well that uh, even if we are going to take guns and say, let's fight, uh, the region, the political landscape in the region would not support you. There won't be any regional solidarity in terms of violence. Violence is a condemned thing at the moment. We will not succeed. I know young people in Zimbabwe, most of people, they do not understand. Why are we talking about peaceful uh, democratic elections in Zimbabwe? And yet we are being controlled by a, a military deep state. How are you going to get uh, rid of that? You talk of... Uh, workers and you even explained that you know we do not have uh, industries in the country so if you are going to use uh, labor withdraw labor use labor strategy uh, to pressurize government for change it will not uh, be affected that much because most of the we got more than 90 percent of unemployment in the country so uh, <coughs> Uh, ye yes, you also uh, talked about hijacking. The struggle was hijacked. The um, 1999, yes, the labor came and they formed the, the movement, and unfortunately, it was hijacked again uh, by other systems, uh, by other kind of politics. <coughs> I don't want to dwell on that in the, the formation of the MDC, how it was hijacked. Uh, but I think we should also understand that it was not on the labor that was part of the formation of that uh, uh, movement, political party. Uh, there were all other stakeholders who were part of that. There were, of course, faith-based organizations. There were, of course, uh, the civil society. There were academics, uh, and all the descending people who the descending voices came together. So yes, uh, the influence came from workers. Uh, we know MT was part of the workers, was leader of the workers uh, with the Gibson Svanda. They were part leaders of the workers. Yes. And the, the influence was driven from the workers. That I agree, admit. Uh, but uh, it was hijacked. Uh, I, I do not fully agree with you. <clears throat> uh, because the interests of workers were not only at, uh, at their workplaces, their wages and salaries only. There was also a political factor. They wanted freedom. They wanted the issue of rights. They wanted uh, the, 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 a development, economic development. 
So workers were not only uh, uh, in, the, in, in the workers' place only. But yes, uh, uh, let me fast forward quickly to how the, the you mentioned about the, the Zinash hijacking the triple C. <laughs> we might have a lot of uh, people with the background of Zinash uh, who are in leadership. But uh, it's not very correct that we were hijacked by Zinas. It's just that uh, a lot of young people came from uh, universities, and those in universities um, were there was this organization of students called Zinash, and they passed through there, and they acquired a lot of knowledge, and they became more conscious of what is happening in their country, and they decided to participate. But it's not like by design that they were uh, to come to hijack uh, the Triple C. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't mention that the, 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 the fact that tri Triple C, uh, you didn't mention the background of Triple C in terms of labor, uh, because your emphasis is on workers. <coughs> because when Triple C was formed, uh, there was virtually no industry at all, literally no industry for workers. Uh, but I want also to say that uh, Triple C has uh, very few months after its formation. And uh, for a movement, for a po political party to achieve uh, uh, that overall presidential 44% under flawed process and uh, in a short period of time like that, uh, they, they deserve to be, I think they deserve to be supported and encouraged. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Patriot, the Patriot, the reason why I, I deliberately omitted the, the, the name of our advocate, Nelson Chamisa, as the leader of Triple C, uh, avoided mentioning it more times, is that uh, there is a growing there was a growing perception that uh, we are bootlickers, the people who support uh, Chamisa, they are bootlickers, they can't change, he's surrounded by people who can't advise him correctly, who can't differ with him, who can't argue against whatever he says. It's not true. We've said many, I've said many times with Chamisa, argued against him, some of his, and sometimes it's not his word that is final. It's not true that Chamisa is, uh, he, he, li he likes to dictate. He, of course, he is the president. He was the, our presidential candidate, is the leader of, 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 of a champion uh, of citizen coalition for change. So, uh, yes, uh, this time I'm mentioning him now. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> but I'm not a bootlegger. <laughs> I differ with him in, in, in many issues. Uh, but as a party, when we come together, uh, we have to support our, our, our striker, we have to, 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 to support uh, our men in the front. Uh, on the same uh, the deep state issue, uh, oh, okay, let me jump that and, and, and go to recalls the issue of structures and uh, recalls how they came about. And, uh, who is Sengezo Shabangu? Shabangu. Uh, we will understand that uh, uh, the person uh, Shabangu was one of the members of the MDC before. He was our when we uh, he was the chairperson of Mat North in the MDC. And the, you know what happened also when people like Ndaibi moved out from uh, Tsangrai, from the MDC, and formed his own PDP. Shabangu was one of the uh, people, uh, was one of his team, one of his people. So when we formed Triple uh, C, Shabangu and other people, the PDP, of course, um, uh, there was no talk of, of, of the PDP. So members of the PDP, uh, members of uh, MTCN, 
members of other political formations, they decided to, <coughs> to rally behind or to support the Triple C. As like any other majority, any other person who is not a, a, a Triple C member. And so you don't be surprised when you see people wearing Triple C at rallies. They are just supporters, most of them. We don't have a database where uh, Sengezo Shavangu is, uh, Shavangu is, a, is a member of Triple C. We don't have a position of the SG in the Triple C. So uh, what happened is that ZAN-PF was looking for a loophole uh, because our strategic ambiguity it caused nightmares for them. And I can tell you that if we had disclosed all our structures, we could be having more many court cases today than we have today. We could have been having more than 10 court cases arising from the constitution, <coughs> arising from those, from those structures. But we realized that uh, we, we, we once beaten, twice shy, we realized what happened to us when we were in the MDC alliance. Uh, we, we know. So Shavango came out, uh, decided, in fact, through the influence of other people, may, maybe uh, with some uh, elements from within us, uh, in issues of power uh, hungry, uh, maybe with the influence, I, I don't know. But what I know is that uh, Chawangu was influenced was influenced also by ZANPF. ZANPF wanted something to do to do, to, to get rid of M, uh, the M, uh, MPs our MPs and also to reduce our number in Parliament uh, so that they can create their two thirds majority to change even the constitution and perhaps even to extend the ED's term in office. So that issue of uh, <laughs> um, the imposter Shabang, we do not uh, think that a normal uh, member of parliament, a normal leader of parliament, the speaker of parliament, under normal circumstances who do actually rely on the letter written by someone like that. I think it, uh, as we understand it, uh, ZANPF does not care about the law, does not care when they want something to achieve something, they don't care. That's why even these uh, courts, they can defy them anytime. So it was a matter of illegalities, as uh, Agom Tambara also alluded, that uh, ZANU-PF, they, they, they acted on illegalities. They knew very well that that letter is just a piece of letter which has no meaning. And the, the, the Triple C on the, on the 11th of September had written a letter to the parliament, to the Speaker of Parliament, informing him uh, the, the channels of communication, the address, Everything is there. If they want to communicate to the Triple C, how uh, regarding its members in Parliament, how they would uh, uh, approach us. But unfortunately, they decided to ignore that and use the, uh, an imposter. I, I think some of you you have heard that the very same uh, Sengezo is now a spokesperson. Is uh, uh, called the Pugen. Kalpan Pugen claimed to be the spokesperson of Sekezo. And he, uh, most of you, you would know where Kalpan Pugen comes from. He's uh, Mr. Monzora's party, is an MDCT member. Recently, before the dissolution of the, uh, the parliament, he was a senator under Monzora. Now, all of a sudden, now he is the spokesperson of the Triple C. Because if he claimed to be Sengezo's uh, uh, spokesperson, uh, Sengezo by uh, claiming to be the Triple C SG, so he is, by extension, he is claiming to be a member of Triple C. Uh, and we don't have such. Now, we understand the push and the pressure for the Triple C 
to have a Congress. We I, I, I look to that, I admit we need uh, some form of uh, leadership uh, uh, arrangement through a Congress, but we, are, we do not want to be forced to do that. We do not want to be forced by the uh, by, by Zanu PF to do that. You know, if you do, uh, check the time frames from the time when we lost, uh, when we formed the party, we were towards elections. When, even when we talk under uh, MDC alliance, when Swangirai went, uh, I mean, passed on, we were left with six months to prepare for elections. So we all know that through dialogue, through engagement, through consultations, it became very difficult for us to go for, for, for a Congress because obviously one would use, uh, beside the use of uh, the use of resources, the funding part of it, which we needed it for election campaign, we had also uh, factored in the issue of ZANPF infiltrating us, dividing us and buying even our members to make sure that our members, uh, you know, with money you can influence uh, uh, any result. So that we were very careful, leadership was very careful from the time under MDC and MDC Alliance and even from the time under uh, Triple C. That the time, even now you can see why the rush, why was the rush for, for, for ZANPF uh, through its um, tender to make all those recalls. They knew if we would allow these people to go for six months, a breathing space for a year, the Triple C would even uh, come up with uh, con disclose and uh, I mean with <coughs> Congress structures or something leadership ele election uh, of leadership, and that would be very difficult. Uh, let's open. Let's work on them now. Of course, the other issue perhaps is that uh, since we are uh, there is likely to be a SADC summit. Uh, this month or so, the outcome uh, may not favor ZANPF. So it's better for them to dismantle uh, the opposition right now, to work hard and make sure that the one, they reduce them from parliament, and uh, uh, even that will also uh, affect the, to reduce the, the, the issue of Finance Act uh, fund that uh, is likely to, uh, to, be, to benefit the Triple C, the opposition as well. So with those kind of factors, uh, ZANPF would not stand uh, or wait they, to make sure that uh, they fulfill their game plan. They, uh, they fulfill that. Uh, coming back to the very sensitive issue of uh, sanctions uh, patriot, <coughs> uh, program director, the sanctions uh, issue, we should understand that right now there are puppets of dictatorship in Africa, especially in Satic, especially in Zimbabwe. And those puppets, and the, 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 uh, there's, one guy, there's one guy who is very uh, influential in, our, in the social media, he formed what he called anti-sanctions. And the, in that anti-sanctions, the narrative there is to uh, prop or to push the propaganda against the Triple C. That Triple C, uh, through uh, its leadership, you know, before we became Triple C, there was Cham Chamisa uh, went to uh, push for sanctions uh, against Zimbabwe. So that kind of a party should not be allowed. Uh, such a leader will lead such a party should not be allowed to lead Zimbabwe at all costs, uh, even demo by democratic means, he should not be allowed. Uh, uh, this is a narrative being pushed by uh, uh, Rutendo Matinyare, one of the guys, the anti is the anti sanctions chairperson, I think he's best in South Africa. And the, uh, we know that there are other. Puppets, uh, also establishments, uh, as uh, even FAS, also working on that. Uh, it's a shame that the people they do not want to they do not want to accept 
that triple C is a new kid on the block. We have new ideas, we have new uh, ways of thinking, uh, we have a new approach, and uh, we are not yet hijacked. We are still <laughs> the triple C that stands for the rights of uh, uh, workers, for the rights of citizens, for the rights of the majority in the country. And uh, as such, uh, on the issues of sanctions, it was not our baby. I, I know they keep on dragging it and pushing it to us. It's not our baby. We do not want sanctions in our country. We do not want sanctions in Zimbabwe. But uh, you remember sanctions, uh, the reason that you have put forward, uh, which led to the sanction to this data, is the issue of data C. The issue of data C, uh, it is ZANPF that created sanctions by going to data C, if at all the issue of Rwanda uh, being sponsored by the West, by America and they had interest in the DRC, there were now uh, two competing forces uh, uh, over the, the, the resources, uh, the mineral resources in, in DRC. That issue then, it's, it boils down to the issue of uh, human rights again. We cannot just dismiss them because it's whose rights, who had the, the, the proper ownership right to, to, to those resources. The people of DRC, what did Mugabe want there? You know, so we can also say that it was not the opposition, if at all you base your argument on the issue of DRC resources. resources. But of course, the issue of the land, because you also talk about the land to say, uh, uh, even though you did, not, uh, you did not emphasize, but it's a public knowledge that uh, some analysts always say the land, the issue that raised, that led to the sanctions from the West was because of the land. Perhaps it's quite, it's, it's also important for me to remind uh, Comrade Mabena that you, uh, when you were part of the, the leader of the MDC, you were one of the people who said that uh, the land issue uh, was uh, the agenda of the MDC, which was then hijacked by ZANPF. So it will be very unfair for us to say uh, the, I mean, the, the ZANPF was the, uh, the, the main uh, advocate of land. The land is a motive issue, we understand it through Africa. When everyone, even in South Africa, when you talk of the land, everyone opened eyes and wants to know what is happening here. We all fought for the land, the liberation struggles, we fought on the basis of land. And uh, I agree with you, uh, Patriot, on that one, that we were fighting for the land. But it's not true that we, uh, the MDC were just puppets of the West and by extension even the Triple C uh, always labeled and dented as, as the puppets of the West. It's not very true. When it comes to land, our policy, our blueprint is very clear. Uh, we will not reverse the land uh, that is already in the hands of the black people in Zimbabwe. We will actually try to audit to say those who have more farms must share those farms with uh, the majority of We still have a lot of Zimbabweans who have no land even to date. The land is concentrated in the hands of the few, uh, the elite, who are part of this military deep state. So the question should probably is, where, how, how is the way, what is the way forward? Uh, I still want to pose the same question to Comrade Mabena. <laughs> <laughs> what is the way forward to get out of this military deep state? Surely it can't be just negotiations. You are saying elections, peaceful democratic elections cannot be uh, the solution. You are saying the, the, the elections, uh, they failed the people of Zimbabwe. That's very correct. But for you to say 
we just want to conscientize people, uh, all our people, um, about mass. Uh, I, I forgot the, the really words that you used, but you talked about conscientizing um, the people massively, uh, perhaps about development. Uh, you are saying that uh, the transitional uh, authority cannot be the solution <coughs> to Zimbabwe. Uh, but if you talk about the, the transitional, uh, it, you sound as if you are saying the transitional authority uh, on its own must be a solution to our economic uh, problems in the country. And you are saying, no, we must first be build the economy. How do we build the economy uh, under such uh, a military uh, state, under such uh, undemocratic uh, leadership, uh, under such a, a situation uh, where you have uh, uh, no uh, free and fair elections? How do you expect to develop the state? How do you expect those people whom you conscientize to develop the, the state and to take power and negotiate and take power, really, when you still have the the the, the power still um, uh, uh, controlled or led by this uh, uh, the military deep state leadership, I still want to find out uh, how best can we move forward and do without elections. Uh, without peaceful elections, yes, you, t you factored in the issue of reforms. This is where I say reforms can be dealt with within that trans transitional authority government, if at all it happens. And within that government, we are not saying it is going to be the issue of the Triple C and the government uh, and, 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 and ZAN alone. Factoring in the theory of Ibo Mandaza. We would say, we would accept that uh, we have, for example, 10 or uh, people from ZANPF, 10 people from uh, C, 10 people from civil society, maybe 10 people from your party, the, the Zimbabwe Communist Party as well, and come and let's work together and let's negotiate reforms. First of all, our, our, our our immediate call will be to, re, to dissolve or disband ZEC. When we disband BEZEC and constitute ZEC uh, with people from uh, different parties. That cannot happen when ZANPF is, uh, is, is in power, uh, when this is, uh, the power is still uh, uh, kept as it is today. But it can only happen under a certain uh, authority that we call transitional authority. GNU, we, can, we don't want to, 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 we don't buy into GNU so much. Because GNU, like you've already indicated, GNU will come with an issue, they will come with a defined uh, with, uh, package of what they want and put it to you and say, no, we don't want anyone from, op on security issues we don't touch. Police is ours. Prisons is ours, uh, the army is ours. So obviously the deep state is controlled by the security apparatus. We cannot dispense on them. It's a very sensitive area in GNU. It's anti that is they've already put inaugurated themselves, they already uh, put a cabinet, they've already assumed the uh, majority in parliament. So obviously they know that by the time we negotiate in the GNU, they will be controlling all the state institutions. They know which one to give uh, away. The same way Robert Mugabe did uh, during the GNU, uh, the previous GNU, where we were given economic ministries and for sure uh, as, as labeled as Western puppets, who the opposition was meant to, to appease the, the, their puppet, their, their masters to come and invest in the country. But we want to, uh, to run away from that kind of approach this time. To say, if at all, uh, the pronouncement by the region will favor the opposition in terms of uh, the SADC summit, what the outcome, what has happened, we will pressure and push. Of course, our first call is that of free and fair, fresh elections. 
which uh, sound like uh, an impossible thing, but uh, it, it is possible. It happened, uh, I think it's in Malawi, uh, it happened in other countries as well. So is Sadiq, which uh, we normally say is a toothless dog, uh, if Sadiq wants to save face uh, from the region, from the international community, uh, they must come out with something tangible. There is a question on, unfortunately, I think it's Undlov who had uh, uh, talked about political resistance to say uh, there's not much resistance from, uh, uh, from the opposition and the and therefore, the case in point is that we are not doing enough for the release of political prisoners like uh, Job Scala and Karik Fuome and others. Yes, he's raising a, he's raising a very critical point. Uh, it will never be enough. We can't say it's enough until the men, the, those people <coughs> are out. It can only be enough when the people are out. So our, pol uh, our campaign uh, given the political landscape in Zimbabwe, it's even difficult for us to put people in the streets. Uh, you put people, people could die. You put people, you create a, a way of uh, them be uh, increase a way of increasing political prisoners. Because the moment uh, they do that, of course, it's one of the uh, the methods that we will use. It's enshrined in the constitution that we must uh, protest. We have uh, lobbed for the freedom of job scala in the international uh, community, in the international forums. We are lobbying for, for, for the freedom of job scala and other freedom, freedom uh, uh, fighters uh, or political prisoners. And we are also saying that it's going to be one of the conditions, we have already stated, that one of the conditions for, being, for, for, for a dialogue is in our dialogue is that political prisoners must be released and uh, uh, we are also uh, saying in terms of disengagement yes I, uh, I think I didn't say much about that in terms of disengagement we are not resigning from Parliament but we are disengaging just like staying away from work but only for for two weeks we have time frame it's not forever. We want to, within these two weeks, to pressurize the government, to pressurize them to, into uh, in engagement, into a dialogue, into a proper dialogue. Of course, uh, we know that it's, gonna, it's not going to be easy, but our dialogue also, we, like, we have approached uh, neutral people uh, in the, uh, who are leading our religions, religi religious leaders, like bishops, but we're also approaching other international people, uh, the well-known well international leaders to come. Of course, we also persuade the SADIC and AU to come and help us. I, we believe that there is still an opportunity for people of Zimbabwe to engage, negotiate, uh, and, and, and come out with a framework that will create a free and fair elections, that will push for reforms. You know, uh, the issue of voters' role, the issue of ZEC, the issue of media, the issue of uh, intimidation. We, we, we need to address those issues uh, uh, in that forum, which will... Uh, uh, but uh, this question still stands with my, my comrade Mabena, that how do we get out from the uh, military deep state it can't be just developing people and conscientizing people uh, uh, on development and uh, uh, <coughs> arming the people. Uh, I think for now, let me send, uh, say thank you. Uh, if there are other questions, you remind me. Thank you. Um, I would like to start by thanking um, Baba Um Pondo. Unfortunately, he's left us early. A patriotic Putuaming Halo Unabuto. And then Unjov. 
and the young men who were the main presenters today. Uh, I think I've learned a lot. You always think that you know everything. But attending such uh, meetings, you gather a lot and your brain is sharpened. Um, let me just jump straightly to your, to your question. Um, is Jonathan Baird there? Yes. Yeah, very good question. And a lot of people have been asking, even when we started talking about uh, e-movement being a political party, they mentioned that as well. So it's not something new. Um, why I mentioned that we would love to have a situation by, by in our country where we have small political parties participating in national de debates, I think it will create a health situation. Because if you look currently, we only have uh, two political parties that are in parliament. Chamber Mliska is out now uh, as an independent in this current parliament. So we only have two political parties. And the debates there, from my experience as a former member of parliament, we are, you know, wallowed into say what we want to say when we're in parliament. You know, we are guided in other ways. You are not independent. You might have your own personal issues that you might want to contribute to the national cause, but you're always, you know, guided by the party's uh, uh, constitution, if I may say that. So a lot of small parties disappear. Yes, I want to agree to you. I think that's your, that is your question. When they want to contest and then they fail and then they disappear. I think there's, um, there's no collaboration between political parties. We want uh, political parties that is like myself, e-movement is for Sululu. When most of these political parties are formed, the emphasis is mainly on the president, no one else. And that's a challenge we have, even with Triple C. If Nelson Chamisa goes now, what will be left with a, a, a Triple C? It's not there. So it's a crisis that we are identifying now that uh, we need small parties. That's why some of us have decided, no, let's come up with another political party with a different ideology. But we should come together and um, and to unite as uh, small political parties and at least at least have i would say three four powerful political parties i'll give a good example of zapu i myself when i engaged uh, when I I, I I i began politics the cornerstone was the reading of uh, joshua Komo's book and i'm so passionate about uh, Father Zimbabwe, who was a nationalist, and E movement is a patriotic and nationalist uh, uh, movement. We put the country first, not the party first. So small parties are needed. They contribute a lot. I can see even uh, Ngabuto here with his uh, uh, socialist party. If he was in parliament, you can imagine what kind of contribution would be added to the August House and other small parties who have powerful uh, uh, um, uh, leaders in them. Um, let me dwell on the questions that uh, you've asked uh, uh, our chairman here, or our presenter, uh, to talk about sanctions. If e-movement were to become uh, the government of today, there won't be sanctions. And I personally believe that in Zimbabwe, there are no sanctions. I know you've said that uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, we have to admit that there are sanctions. When I was in MDC, we perceived them as restrictive measures as MDC. We didn't take them as sanctions. Why? Simply because if I am in Slovela Day, how do sanctions affect me? In fact, the United States are the ones who are providing aid to most of these uh, uh, rural area, uh, rural folks in terms of U.S. aid. Sakatrukuti, what are sanctions really? So it's a question that uh, was debated during the uh, GNU, and I want to add further that sanctions was one of the four outstanding conditions that were left out in the GPA. Unfortunately, most of the parties, and to me, it's, 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 it really it disheartened me because uh, even the leaders in the political parties are not talking about we're only talking about electoral reforms now because we are going towards the elections. But there are security reforms that need to be done. There are media reforms. I think Ngawuto is touched on the issue of, the, of, of engaging the army. Those are some of the issues that we should be talking about. 
but now it's silent. Media silent. And the, the on the report of the, the Sadak report, they picked it up. That media is biased towards Zanu PF, ZBC, all small parties. They tried to you know to fix it and put Ama small parties to contribute, but it was too late. Zanu, it's all Zanu PF on ZBC. So those are some of the issues that we should start talking about. Serious issues. So those four outstanding issues I remember very well because when I was member of parliament by then, Chabombeke came and emphasized on those four conditions. Uh, I said uh, uh, it was the, 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 the um, uh, reforms on media, reforms on, on, on security, and reforms on the electoral. It was a task given to MDC by then. It was MDCT and MDCN to go out and remove sanctions. And Mok and Changirai, Walshman, Mube, and I think they went with Zanu, Mzembe. They went all over the, all over the world to try and remove those uh, 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 sanctions. But unfortunately, they failed. It was a condition put by Zanu PF, and up to now, nothing has changed. So we must start talking about those issues. Uh, then there's a call, call uh, you, you asked that you should talk about to, to unite the opposition. And I think Ubawa Umpondo, I actually thanked him when I met him outside there, that there's need now for all small political parties and even the big parties, uh, our big brother, uh, Triple C, uh, to come and join us so that we can form a united front to fight ZANU PF. We cannot go to 2028 in this state. And this is the right opportunity for us because at least we've got support of, support of, uh, of SADAC, support of the AU and the EU and other observers. They saw what happened. We know. We cannot have another election in these conditions. I personally knew that we are not going to win elections. That's why we didn't even bother to participate. I tried to talk to some members in Triple C, most of them I know. I even tried to send some messages to the president of Triple C that why are you going into these elections when we know very well that ZEC is partisan. As a solution to that is us as e-movement. <clears throat> and I think Uwa Hompond has mentioned that. ZEC, the current ZEC must be disbanded, dismantled and a new ZP formulated through the Act of Parliament. And I believe that's why I'm talking about small parties, that each small party or any party should have its own members in ZAC so that it really becomes a wholly independent, transparent body, not the one that we have currently. He's Zanu PF Liana, that's not ZAC. <clears throat> if you dig deep in that, most of those people are running that institution. They are former CIOs. When I went there, I'm not shy to say this, to register, e-movement is a political party. And what I received from those guys, it was terrible. Then the moment I told them that I was a former member of parliament, then they, they moved back. They wanted all the information. Then I said, no, we just want to register. We say we, we're not going to participate in these elections. We are going to participate in maybe the next forthcoming elections. And it was the same thing that I, I, I faced when I went to, 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 to apply for, for a demonstration at the Harare Central Police. You cannot go there. They will toss to you, those guys. It's all ZANPIF. They don't want any demonstration. But in our constitution, it clearly states that a demonstration is an equal right for anyone to demonstrate against anything. And that's the way that we are pushing forward. We have written letters. Uh, to ZEC first and to most of the government institutions, to the president who participated, to the parties and other stakeholders, and said, we are not recognizing the current government. It's null and void. And we called upon ZEC to do that. But I know, obviously, they're not going to do that. And we called upon the opposition, which is triple C, and ZANU PF to engage and sort the mess that is in our country. I would have loved if ZANU PF and Triple C were not there. I think our country would be in a better position. That's me, personally. And then when it comes to our big brother, Triple C, it's said though, <laughs> many people are asking me, 
prominent people, even in my constituency, Slovela, why don't you join Triple C and then you become a member of parliament? Uh, and I simply say, no, I'm not in there to benefit myself. I don't want to be a leader who's just going to have a big pocket, you know, like most African leaders. We are there to steal from the public. We now need leaders. We've got people at heart. Leaders who are going to take Zimbabwe to a greater height. Zimbabwe is a beautiful and rich country. I personally believe Zimbabwe is one of the richest countries, not only in Africa, but in the world. Long before we reached in South Africa. I remember when I started doing my banking uh, work at Standard Merchant Bank. Our Zimbabwe dollar was stronger than most of these currencies. It was even stronger than, stronger than the rand. When I came here in 1994 for my first visit here, it was on a holiday. I think our dollar, we had to get two runs for our dollar. Which means that Zimbabwe is still a rich country, but with no leadership. The crisis that we have currently is that we don't have leadership. Triple C sees itself as another ZANU PF. That's according to me and some of my, my fellow members. Why am I saying that? Because if it had won this election, mark my words now, it was going to be like ZANU PF. Nothing was going to change. Because they were going to enjoy what the PF guys are enjoying currently. You see, that's the challenge we have. If these elections were free and fair, I'm telling you now, Triple C, we're going to have a two-thirds majority. And I have worked with most of those uh, guys in Triple C. I've worked with them, even with the Triple C leader. I was in the National Organizing Committee of MDC. Yes, we agree on many other things, but in terms of uh, 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 our value system, we differ. We as e-movement, we value integrity, which is honesty. We value transparency. Like now in Triple C, <laughs> the party is structureless and look at the problems that are, are being caused. And it's affecting the whole range of people, especially the people who voted for Triple C. They are nowhere currently. And everybody is looking upon Nelson Jamisa to come with a solution. Guys, come on. We cannot expect that. He has had enough. He's tried his best. Yes, we know he has got his weaknesses as a, as a political leader, as an individual. All of us have got weaknesses. The onus is now on us. Zimbabwe, Iweneni, Tinebasa. You cannot look forward to Saturday to solve our problems. We cannot look forward to, to South Africa. As Zimbabweans, we have to sit down and solve our own problems. I say even to E.D. He's lying to us that the country <laughs> is moving forward, is progressing. He's lying. Up until he starts believing, no, there's a problem in our country. Then we are going to start to have solutions to our problem. But if ZANU PF denies that they've got a problem in Zimbabwe, then we're not going anyway. That syndrome of saying, we never have to become cabinet ministers and taking all the positions, and we are just debating on our social media. Zimbabweans, we must wake up. Say time now, we should be serious. Our country is burning. Zimbabwe, we don't have water there in Zimbabwe in most cities. We don't have electricity. <clears throat> I'm just mentioning these two major things because that affects most of us. Even Vegas are not being affected with that. But there are a whole range of issues that we have back home there. But we have good professors. Most of us here are educated. What's wrong with our Zimbabweans? Are we really educated? I ask myself. Are we really educated? Why can't we solve our problems? Can we all of us run away from Zimbabwe? I feel sad for our youths. You know, our stand, when they were telling me that, ah, this drug system, I mean, they, my drugs are in Zimbabwe, now they're even worse than, you know. When we grew up, Kubuta Mbaje was taboo in our country. Yeah? Now everybody is sticking, the youth are sticking there in, 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 in Zimbabwe. And us as parents, we're not doing much. So my call is on, on all Zimbabweans 
to wake up and start doing something. Even if it's in any university, whether you're a student here in South Africa, you know what happened. The student participated in Shakespeare. They demonstrated. They didn't want to learn Africans. In Zimbabwe, hey, <laughs> guys, you can go to demonstration. If you are not prepared to die now, then let's not talk about any progress in Zimbabwe. Let's not talk about any change in our country. E.G. says it openly. He was prepared to die, but he reserved a room. They went through a lot, those guys. Why are we scared? Why are we afraid? That's my call. I haven't made to Chamisa. I said, hey, tell your guys to go on the streets. Demonstrate. There are many strategies. Because we all look upon Chamisa. He's got the following. We cannot deny that. I would like to conclude and say, I think it has been said here, that uh, we need to unite, ladies and gentlemen, and they have a strong front. I like Zapu. He did that approach, which was national, nationalistic, which was something that could have taken our country, just like its leader, the late Joshua Ngomu. He is my true hero. And I want to end on that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, comrades, uh, th thank you so much. Uh, I need to be somewhere at quarter past, so I'm under pressure in terms of time. Uh, comrades from Zapu had asked the question uh, and uh, has gone for an interview. You see, com Comrade Trust and Love, or Champion Trust and Love. We are now reducing everything to an electoral context. Uh, that, that's where we differ with the Triple C. Because uh, you want us to believe that uh, once we have free and a fair elections in Zimbabwe, ZANU PF is out of power, we'll have a land of milk and honey. This is what the liberation movements said during the struggle against colonialism and the apartheid. And if you look into the inequality in South Africa, because people perceived or were promised that post-1994, everything was going to be okay in South Africa. But to check at the inequality in South Africa, notwithstanding that is 30 years after what you characterize as democratic breakthrough, and the ANC calls it freedom. So the issue is about the economy. The issue is about building a class conscious citizen. The issue is about understanding the character of the state. The Zimbabwean state, as, as, as we have been explaining, it's a deep state. ZANU PF is a puppet of a deep state. ZANU PF is not a state, it is a puppet of a deep state. ZANU PF can be removed from power. Another puppet of a deep state takes over. There are examples all over the world. Look at what happened in Zambia. Right? Ch uh, uh, Kaunda gets removed from power in 1991. Chiluba comes in. What happened to Chiluba? He reversed the gains that were made under Kaunda. You are talking of Malawi. Yes, there have been change of governments in Malawi. So you can have a change of government, but that does not mean that we have destroyed the deep state. Because uh, <clears throat> the deep state, which is militaristic in character, right, uh, uh, runs the economy. And a part of the problem that it is facing is that it has no access to international markets. So they can give power to triple C. 
so that triple C opens the way for it to have access to international markets for its economic uh, interests. So we need to separate the two. So winning an election and a winning state power are two different things. The, this is why I was giving a, an example that uh, if you are to build a class conscious citizen, you can't build a class conscious citizen in the streets. You need to get people into the workplace. And we have explained how uh, you need to rebuild the Zimbabwean economy. The mistake that we did, or we missed an opportunity in 2013, in 2009, when we joined the inclusive government, the only thing that, that we achieved <coughs> during the inclusive government was the adoption of the 2013 constitution. If even the commissioners for ZEC were agreed during the, the inclusive government, yes, of course, there have been changes in, in the ZEC uh, commissioners, but each party that was represented in parliament submitted names of commissioners that it wanted to be members of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. All this was achieved under the inclusive government. We then did not take advice from SATAC itself in Maputo, in the Maputo summit in 2013. When because we thought, because we're part of the inclusive government, we were going to win the elections. And a part of the problem from the opposition is that uh, while the MDC in, to, in, in uh, 2008 won 100 seats, including in perceived Zanu PF strongholds, the people that uh, were elected as members of parliament were what we call tourist MPs. When they then got into parliament under the inclusive government, they forgot their constituencies. So that, 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 that is the challenge that, that, uh, uh, that, that you have in Zimbabwe. So the second opportunity which we, we lost, it was in 2017, right? The Central Committee of the Zimbabwe Communist Party meets in Bulawa in August 2017. And they resolved that uh, unless you have uh, implemented electoral reforms, the outcome of an election was going to be disputed. While some of us were, were then proposing a national dialogue to rebuild the economy and to ensure the full implementation of electoral reforms without going to an election, because we knew it was going to be, uh, it was going to be contested. Others were part of the people that were planning the military coup, assisted by the British. We all know how the late Morgan Swangrai left his, sick bed, his deathbed in Johannesburg to go uh, 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 to the uh, inauguration of Emerson Mnangagwa in 2017. We saw the presence of the deputy foreign minister in Britain responsible for Africa. What they were trying to do, because the coup in 2017 uh, was thought would uh, a, a government of national unit was going to be established. And we now know that Chamisa uh, at the cross, uh, who is Marit, Ma how to pronounce his name? What is Maridat. Maridat. Yes, we said we're going to be ministers in, the, in that government. It was Swang Rai who said, if you join this government, you are out of the party. This is why they did not. Hence, there's always a video circulating. Chamisa assisting Idim Nangakwa and the Chiwenga to go and visit the Siki, Siki uh, uh, Swangrai. And uh, the discussion, as we understood to them, the discussion was about postponing the elections. Right. So we missed that opportunity to reform and uh, to implement the reforms. Then post-2018 elections, your leader Chamisa then disarms his, his young people. He insults them, says it was stupid for you to go and do it to demand the release of the electoral result. Right? 
So opportunities have been lost. But, but we are saying, before I then get to this, the other thing, when, when we say the influence of imperialists is huge in Zimbabwe, currently we have a war in Ukraine, we have a war in Palestine and Middle East. Your leader, Nelson Chamis, goes and prays in Israel. When he's on the mountains in Zimbabwe praying, he dons the Israel flag. How do you think, how do you expect progressive forces to give support to such a lead? And you know, Comrade Trask, in 2002, that when we had presidential elections, whose outcome was disputed, when we ran a campaign in the MTC to have a rerun of those elections, the Tanzanian diplomats were very clear that uh, we will not support you for a rerun if it is Mokken Swangrai, because we do not know the deals that had signed with the Tony Blair. And you expect that the progressive world today, when we have the imperialist war in Eastern Europe, when, when we have the Americans supporting Israel against the people of Palestine. And do you think that the progressive war will then support a rerun after the SATAC report for Triple C to win? It will not happen. And in any case, <laughs> I'm now concluding. <laughs> in, in any case, Triple C is imploding. You have put yourself in a very difficult position. Firstly, the SATAC report comes out. You then go to be sworn in as members of parliament and the councillors. When you are recalled by your own member, whom you are now, you don't have a register to start with. You have just confessed there's no membership. Anyone can stand and say, I'm the secretary general, I'm the what, what, I'm the what, what. Because it belongs to citizens. Leaders must at the back, it belongs to citizens. And the ZANU PF has capitalized on that, right? But the issue is, you have given yourself two weeks to disengage. You are saying these two weeks until this issue is going to be resolved. It is not going to be resolved in two weeks. In any case, it is not going to be resolved. More recalls are coming. You expire of two weeks to disengage. You will find yourself now, no any other excuse. You will find, have to find another excuse to say, why do we continue out of parliament? Your members, they will stay, is it three sittings or what? I'm not sure. Without going to parliament, they will be expelled from parliament. <laughs> so your strategy is, is, is wrong altogether. Right? So, so it's triple sin is imploding. Your MPs, you were raising money. And these MPs, they had to practically raise money to support their campaign. Some of them had to sell property to support their campaign. And you are telling them that they should not go to parliament. You are now going to have another problem after two weeks. Where your own MPs, because it's now the politics of eco economics, bread and bad, they will say we are, we are going to parliament. This is another problem that you are going to find yourself with. So by the time the SATAC summit happens, uh, your triple C will be gone. And this is a reality that, that we must face. This is why we are therefore saying we need to go back to the National Working People's Dialogue and establish, after proper consultation, a mass movement that is organizationally strong because you cannot negotiate with a deep state when you are weak. You were supposed to build a strong triple C, which was going to be able to negotiate because you have 73 members of parliament directly elected, plus senators, PR, and so forth. You were in a better position to negotiate. But organizationally, you are weak. You built a cultism in the form of Nelson Chamisa, and then now your project is just crumbling. That's, that's the sad part. Comrades, like I said, I have to be somewhere. Korapas, but a patriot we need uh, <clears throat> to have more discussions uh, on, on the Zimbabwean question. Yeah. Uh, uh, be because uh, if we do not give a proper characterization of the Zimbabwe crisis, we will not find a solution. 
because the, we, the struggle in Zimbabwe, or let me put it in this way, we are engaged in a dual struggle in Zimbabwe. It's a struggle against imperialism and against the looting class. We must reject the uh, stooges of imperialist forces inside Zimbabwe. We must reject, which many of whom are located in the opposition, we must reject the looting class, many of whom are located in ZANU-PF. And the ZANU-PF has mobilized your Pentecostal churches, your pastors, uh, these prophets, uh, who are looting our diamonds. We must reject all that. So the strike in Zimbabwe is a, a strike against imperialism. It is the strike against the looting class. It is not necessarily about elections. It is once we resolve that problem, then Zimbabwe will get back to her feet. Thank you, comrades. Th th thank you for coming. Because I should close. Yeah, we've already thank you so much. But we want to apologize, comrades, that uh, we thought we were going to have a finger lunch. Uh, the comrade that was assigned this task has decided to switch off his phone. Uh, legs organizational discipline. So our apologies, comrades. Next time we'll make sure that it is us that take charge. Thank you, comrades. Thank you.